Mississippi as for the first time since 1992, the University of Florida has come a-calling to the Delta. In this wild year in the SEC, Steve Spurrier's Gators have emerged as a conference favorite with eyes on the national championship. For Mississippi State, today presents an opportunity to answer the bell and prove that it, too, is one of the SEC's elite. Today, it's the third-ranked Florida Gators against the Mississippi State Bulldogs. And welcome into Starkville, home to Mississippi State. everybody, I'm Craig Bowler-Jack, along with former Oklahoma quarterback Dean Blevins. Welcome into Starkville, Mississippi. The emotions, you can feel it right now. Until last week, Dean, you had Florida and Mississippi State both unbeaten. Enter Lou Holtz, South Carolina, taking a big bite out of the Bulldogs. Florida rolls in here, though, 4-0. But to stay perfect in this season, they have to deal with a very active Mississippi State defense. Wow. I mean, what a matchup we have here. And Jesse Palmer is going to have to keep racking up the numbers. You know, you need a computer to keep track of what Jesse Palmer, the quarterback, has been doing for Florida. At this point, he has 1,000 yards in the air, six touchdowns and one interception. And he ran for four touchdowns last week. Jesse Palmer has all the physical tools, a live arm. He makes all the throws. He says his nerves have settled, and his decisions are so good, Craig, that even Steve Spurrier does not have him in his doghouse. That's quite a statement right there. You can see Spurrier and his uh, Gators making their way on here to Starkville. Talk about Mississippi State, Dean. Truly their best offense right now is their defense through the first three games of this season. Already four defensive touchdowns. Well, you know, it's only in the Deep South do you have a Jesse playing quarterback and a pig playing dog. But that's what we have defensively for Mississippi State, and they have racked up some great numbers. Look here, 287 yards total defense is all that they have given up. And they have scored almost as many touchdowns as the offense. If you're playing quarterback against them, you better be ready because this team will blitz you as soon as you get off the bus. I mean, they create car wrecks in the backfield with big, mobile, strong, fast athletes, and they create the points. They've already scored a bunch of touchdowns, and something's got to give here today. Pig Prather from the secondary will be involved in a lot of plays at his strong safety slash linebacker position. What will give? Will it be State's defense, or will it be the offense of Florida and Coach Steve Spurrier. It is a tremendous coaching matchup today. There's Steve Spurrier, won the Heisman as a player in Gainesville, now the head coach, led the Gators to the national championship back in 1996, 11 years in Gainesville. On the other side, Mississippi State head coach Jackie Sherrill in his 10th year, 23rd as a head coach, with stops at Washington State, Pittsburgh, and Texas A&M. Then you look at the weather here in Starkville, a little warm, late September day, 85 degrees, high humidity, but the forecast is for clear skies, and wind will not play a factor in this game today. You look at the series note, it's been a while since these two teams hooked up the last time, 1993, and the Florida Gators took Mississippi State 38-24. As you can hear, one of the noisiest crowds in the SEC. Welcome to Scott Field, 40,000 strong. Mississippi State will receive to start this game, and the Gators will kick away. Florida perfect. They roll in here, third rank in both polls, Dean. 4-0, and 2-0 in the SEC East, while... Mississippi State was hoping to be in this undefeated position, but Lou Holt, a uh, former colleague of ours, doing some good things down South Carolina way. And the kick taken at the five-yard line by Pig Prater. At the 20, high jumps at the 25, and is taken down at the 28-yard line. Quarterback for Mississippi State, Wayne Matkin, 17 and 7 as a starter. Some say he looks a little like Chris Rock, the comedian. You know, he's a big fella too at 6'4, yeah. and he can really see the field. Well, he sort of plays like uh, is it Aaron Brooks at Virginia, and I think 
He has some Randall Cunningham in him as well. Randall and Huntington, the two wide receivers set to the top of your screen on first down. Play action. Matkin wants to throw, and he throws deep, but too deep. Incomplete down around the 30-yard line. Offensively for the Mississippi State Bulldogs, Miller and Williamson in the backfield, along with Grendel Huntington, and the tight end is Donald Lee. Up front, big. Womack and Lee right way 346. Fair, Watson, and Fairchild round right out the front. Mississippi State will show you many sets throughout the day. Right now, three wide receivers from the shotgun. Matkin rolls and fires. Incomplete on the fingertips of Parker. Defensively for the Florida Gators, it's Mitchell, Gurley, Warren, and Brown. Alex Brown, the All-American at the defensive end spot. Linebackers, Owens, Matt Ferrier, and Hardman, a sophomore. Secondary includes Alexander, Todd Johnson, Manuel, and Lito Shepard. Very young secondary for Steve Spurrier. Alex Brown, an All-American, hasn't played like it at times. Back in the starting lineup, he'll need to be in the backfield all day for the Gators. Third down and 10, once again from the shotgun, and now flags are down as Gerald Warren got a fast start from that defensive tackle spot. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Well, Steve Shaw, today's referee giving us the call well Mississippi State's coming out opening it up it's not exactly the way you want the game to start offensively with two incompletions and a penalty but they are showing that they are going to play wide open football against this active defense and it's an offense under suspect too Dean because they're ranked 94th in the country averaging just about 272 yards Gators throw in the blitz and nearly a costly costly throw by Matkin. Hardman batted that ball, got his hand up on it, and that's uh, fourth down and a punting situation for Mississippi State. Well, I think that Mississippi State is probably lucky to get out of this at least having the chance to punt here instead of an interception because one of those was not close and that one easily could have been intercepted. Prentice Cole back to kick inside his own 10-yard line. Lito Shepard back inside his own 35 and a good, strong kick and a fair catch taken at the 33-yard line. Now that is one thing that Mississippi State can do with the best teams in the country. They can kick the football. It doesn't matter if you're talking about kicking off, field goals, punts, or whatever. Jackie Sherrill's good at it. Now 34-yard kick by Prentice Cole. He averages 44, which is tops in the SEC. And there is Jesse Palmer, has thrown for over 3,000 yards during his career, 26 touchdowns. He leads this team in rushing touchdowns five this season. And they open this thing up, five wideouts. They have a slot man in motion. First and 10. From the 33 shotgun is Jesse Palmer. Three-step drop throws, a player on his knee, incomplete. Well, he had a look at Rache Caldwell. Fred Smoot was on, was on his back incomplete. And now offensively for the Florida Gators, running backs of Graham and Frazier, wide receiver, Caldwell and Jacobs, and the tight end is Aaron Walker. Offensively, up front, Pearson Moody, Jorgensen, Hires, and Kenyatta Walker. Walker, keep an eye on uh, big number 78. Struggling right now with a bit of a left ankle sprain. Take it down, Tim Palmer, good protection in that pocket, throws near side, up and caught by Hogabrook. Hogabrook breaks a tackle and out of bounds at midfield at the 40, call it the 46-yard line. Josh Morgan made the tackle, the free safety. And defensively now for Mississippi State. Up front, it's Knight, Davis, Galladay, and Wims. Three seniors and a junior. Linebackers of Stevens and Mario Hagan. In the secondary, you've got the two sides. You call them the pig safeties. Pig, pig Prather. Josh Morgan, who just made that tackle. And there's Fred Smoot. Six interceptions and just 14 career games. Well, he talks a lot of smack, but he can back it up. Perhaps the best secondary man in the country. 
Well, they had the four wide receivers set. They spread the field, and they gave it to Ernest Graham, but no goal. Toby Galladay shot the gap, and they dropped the Gators for a loss back to midfield. Well, it is tough to run on a Joe Lee Dunn defense, especially if you don't block them. Galladay, all 315 pounds of him, was in the backfield virtually unblocked. Galladay on a Mississippi Delta Community College. That brings up second down and 14. Palmer going with the shotgun on this series. High snap. Sets up the screen in the middle. Drops. Incomplete. Well, that's a dangerous call. But you know what? Steve Spurrier, he likes those trick plays early to try to set that defense off balance. Well, he does. And Galladay, the man responsible for getting this play all confused again. You see Galladay right there. He was in the middle of that screen play. Terrific defense. Great matchup today. Steve Spurrier on the offensive side and a terrific defensive coordinator for Mississippi State in Jolie Dunn. Third down, 14. Confusion. They'll have to call time out here. And they got the play clock down to three. They throw up the uh, little rainbow and it's caught. Caldwell beats Smoot. Close to the first down marker. Stops the clock with 13.25 left in this opening quarter. You know, the um, Mississippi State people were saying Steve Spurrier will always bring something different that we don't expect. And I wonder there, he was on the sideline motioning timeout and confusion. So was Jesse Palmer. Then all of a sudden, quick snap and go. I, I wonder if that was deception. Whatever it was, it was a nice completion setting up a short court. Dean, if you know Steve Spurrier, nothing surprises you <laughs> when it comes to calling plays on the offensive end. Right. Ernest Graham, Rod Frazier in the backfield with Paul Well and Jacobs. Fourth down and short. Play action. Palmer sets it up. Rod Frazier, the fullback, who came in with only one reception, had the first down and more. And that will bring it back Mississippi State way. Scoreless in Starkville. We'll be back. The cheerleaders in blue skies above Scott Field here in Starkville, Mississippi. The Gators, third ranked in the country, taking on Mississippi State, who were in the top 25 a week ago until a guy named Lou Holtz, who has rebuilt an incredible fashion in South Carolina, got the big win. Well, what a story Lou Holtz has got going over there. I mean, can you believe that? Every year, college football has several stories that are big, but uh, this one is absolutely remarkable. Well, there's the game plan right there for Steve Spurrier. <laughs> Mississippi State back on the offense for the second time. Flags are down and some, uh, let's just call it some, some words <laughs> as that play was broken up. The flag's down at the 47. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Now the play clock ran dry. You look at Jackie Sherrill. His patented sun sunwear. How to market those? Person 15 now. And the behind is Dante Walker. Maybe a yard up to the 32, 33 yard line. Mississippi State's defense is saying, offense, help us out a little bit. Look at the number of defensive plays that they have had in ball games. And offensively, 55, only 53, and 73. To win the day, Mississippi State can't turn the ball over, and they have to have at least 65 plays offensively. Second down, 15 for the shotgun. Duncan has set up the screen to the far side. And boy, great pursuit as Terrell Grendel made the catch with blazing 4-3 speed, but he could not run Alexander and Manuel. Well, what happens if your offense doesn't happen 55 plays? What that means is that your defense is on the field all the time. And of course, Craig, we've talked this week, the defense has been scoring touchdowns on its own for Mississippi State, and they have to go back on the field to compound that fact. But uh, the offense has to crank it up, and so far it's not looked good. Dante Walker lined up alongside Matkin. Third down and 13. Low snap. Blitz coming. Matkin throws up the rainbow. Has a man. Clarence Parker. 
Walker down the sideline, outran Daryl Dixon. And Mississippi State in business. Parker wheels around on the sideline. In between, the safety can't get there. This is Benny Alexander, and the safety coming over late is Dixon, who was not did not start this game. Todd Johnson actually got the start, and Dixon has been slow this season in tackling, and that time in getting over on the long pass. Big play for Mississippi State. 35 yards as Parker stepped out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Griffith and Walker in the backfield. Backing on the roll line. Wide open. Justin Griffith. Griffith to the 15. First down. Bulldogs and hit and knocked down by Todd Johnson. Now Griffith plays that tailback or fullback spot. Got good hands. That's his sixth reception of the season. Well, Griffith is perhaps the most versatile of the three backs. And the, the defensive changes for the Florida Gators so far aren't working out the way they'd like. Mitchell is one of the changes. John Hoke, the defensive coordinator, has made several changes this week. First down to the hole comes Walker. Makes a tackle. High hurdle to the five. Flags are down, but Walker catching some air. Manuel made the hit for the Florida Gators. You know what? They didn't call that down the... When the ball hit the ground, they didn't call that uh, uh, the ball being dead. It was a live fumble. The penalty will probably overrule it. But that ball was uh, was alive when it hit. Now there's a conference at around the five, six yard line. And here is once again our referee, Steve Shaw. During the run, five yard face mask on the defense. It's a lot. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Here's Walker coming through, and Dante Walker at 225. There's the face mask. This guy has huge thighs, and he is one of the most ballyhoo backs to come into Mississippi State in some time. He's been somewhat of a disappointment. He's a true sophomore, and he'll get plenty of action today. A nice run there. Ballyhoo is right. Nearly 1,900 yards his senior year in high school with 33 touchdowns. Mississippi State, first and goal inside the five-yard line. Handoff, second effort is Walker. And he pulls his way to the one-yard line. And Manuel, the strong safety, had to strong arm him to pull him down. This is power football. You get the fullback blocking, offensive line doing his job. But watch the second effort of the running back. Dante Walker keeps those big thighs up in the ground. Up in the air, rather. Keeps the knees moving, Craig. And uh, he's a tough one to stop north and south. And Jackie Sherrill said his team needs to go north and south today. They can't win a game running east and west against Florida. Now second down goal from at the one-yard line. Once again, stop. Walker had a good head of steam, but Florida Gators, they bend but don't break. They try to run behind uh, Fairchild and Watson. Well, it's going to be a tough matchup going that direction because Fairchild is going to have his work cut out for him. On the day, most of the time, he will have Alex Brown, the All-American, and he'll also be running to the side of Gerard Warren. And those are two studs defensively. Big play call here. Wouldn't be surprised to see some play action and get Matt to give him a chance to run or throw. Now you talk about big play call. It is for John Hope, the defensive coordinator of Florida, who's been under some fire the past couple of weeks. Matt can under center, wants to throw a third down goal. In the middle, up for grabs, incomplete. It was nearly taken in on a pick by Lito Shepard. For Jackie Sherrill. Jackie will take the points, Craig. I mean, he's an old Bear Bryant disciple. You take the points when you can get them. You take the lead over Florida when you have the opportunity, and I agree with this call. And trotting onto the field is Scott Westerfield. This will be a 19-yard attempt. This ends on more. The, handler, the kick is up and away, and it is good from 19 yards. So Westerfield now 5 of 5 on the season. And Mississippi State leads the Gators by 3. Well, points have been tough to come by for Mississippi State early this season, but they are on the board 3-0. Westerfield from 19 yards. Dean 9 plays 61 yards and 336 off the clock. 
Well, the Florida defense looked good early, but uh, they have been the weak spot of this Gator football team, and Mississippi State made them look weak on that drive until they got to the goal line. John Michael Mullins puts a good foot into it. Fumble by Shepard about three yards deep. Picks it up. Get on his feet. Flags her down. Shepard breaks the tackle at the 30. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. He's got Shepard can walk it in. He only has to hope that that flag is not penalty, is not again Florida, which I would expect it to be. Lito Shepard, but a flag, you can see it, at the 16-yard line. During the return, holding on the receiving team, it'll be two yards from the start of the foul, half the distance to the goal, it'll be first down Florida. Let's see if we can pick up this hold because it really hurts Florida. First of all, if he hadn't bobbled it, he would have downed it in the end zone. It may have been right there on 83 Wells, the tight end. You know what happens in that situation, though, Craig, is when you bobble a ball, you muff a ball in the end zone, the defense just overrun. assumes as it's going into the end zone that uh, it's another touchback. Or they overrun, they overrun their cover. Or maybe both. Yeah, but I, I think maybe they relaxed a moment, and when you do, you take advantage of it, and Florida did, but they really didn't. Jacobson called well. The wide out to Brandon Frazier in the backfield. Palmer to Graham. And let's go to New York for an update with Tim Brando. Timmy. Craig and Dean, I've got a kick return that was not called back. Andre Davis of Virginia Tech, he's their key receiver. He did this to East Carolina earlier in the year. Stopped once, stopped twice on a dime. And there he goes against Boston College to make it a 14 to nothing lead. Virginia Tech getting it done. Back to the beautiful golden triangle of start. was Andre Davis. And Virginia Tech up 14 on the road as he race for the touchdown. Right now, second down at 10 for the Florida Gators, down by three. Jesse Palmer in his own end zone. Steps up and fires. Complete. Hit, drop, incomplete now is the call. Well, Rache Caldwell went up, had the football, and took a hard hit from Eugene Clinton, also known as Pig. Clinton sends back in zone and zeroes in on Caldwell. And that's all you can do. That's the only way that you can keep that from being a completion because Palmer does a great job of finding a soft spot in the zone. You know, Dean, Clinton and Pig, Pig Prather, they, they call them the dog safeties and for a reason. They will growl, bite you, call you, whatever it takes. <laughs> Third down as Palmer sets his feet. Safety. Safety is a safety, and the defense scores again for Mississippi State. Well, through three games, it was four touchdowns. Why not throw in a safety? And it's 5 nothing, Mississippi State. Great defense, but if you're Jesse Palmer, you're back that far, especially against Mississippi State, you got to know where you are. Get rid of the football. And that is a poor decision by the quarterback and one that Steve Spurrier will chat with Jesse Palmer about because not only do you lose two points to Mississippi State, but you turn around and have to kick the ball to them. Well, yeah, give the safety to Willie Blade, the senior. 6'2", 318. He was moving fast and got... Jesse Palmer deep. You make a good point, Dean. You got to know where, where you are always on the football field. And he's set up in the end zone. I think the key for Florida is going to be to figure out what this Mississippi blitzing, crazy, unorthodox defense is going to do. If you don't figure it out, they're going to give you lost yardage and they're going to make you turn the ball over. If you do figure it out, you're going to have your share of big plays. And that will offset the blitzing from Mississippi State, but so far, defense is winning. Jeff Chandler has it teed up. He's going to kick this ball away from the 20. After the safety, and Dante Walker, Big Prather, back to receive for Mississippi State. He's been whipping him the last week and a half, but he has a great leg. Good kick. Big at the 14. Big finds a seam at the 35, breaks the tackle, and knocked down at the 40-yard line. 
Mike, you know, in reality, that was a ball that was kicked four yards deep into the end zone, and it probably wouldn't have been returned had it been kicked from the normal spot. And that's the same as running it back to the 20-yard line. But because of where they kick from, Mississippi State has terrific field position. Indeed, really, a safety can be one of the most devastating plays in a game because you get two, you lose two, and then you have to kick away from the 20. And you always give your opponent good field position. Right. Hand off to Griffith. And Dean, here's what happened last week, Mississippi State, South Carolina. On top, Kendall Robertson is in position, but a half a second, he turns his head around and loses the defender, loses the receiver, and that touchdown is the difference in Mississippi State being undefeated and having one loss. He told us he played his worst game of his career, but you know what, he's a six-year senior, and he's been around that long, he bounced back. Yeah, he do. He's a good player. Here comes Walker. At midfield, should be a first down, close to one, hit by Johnson, the strong safety of, of Florida. Mississippi State, and offensively, has Florida confused. Slanting, they go backside, there's only one man back there, the free safety, Todd Johnson, who can make that play. Dante Walker's big 225 pounds are motoring along pretty well. First and 10 at the 49 of Florida. Matkin, strong arms that ball deep down to the post, incomplete. For another update on Boston College, Virginia Tech, back to New York and Tim Brando. All right, Craig, this may be the first true test for Virginia Tech's defense all year. Cedric Washington, a 15-yard shot off a little stretch play. That cuts it to 14-7. Virginia Tech leading BC. Now some audio problems from our New York studios, but uh, you can see Boston College at home now, breaking uh, that score in half, 14-7 as they rally. BC has a nice club. They'll have to get after it, though, because Virginia Tech, I think they are loaded and has they have a shot again at a national championship, in my opinion. Quick hit to the sideline as Desenzo Miller tries to spin, picks up a couple to the 47. You know, Desenzo Miller, their number 12, is a neat guy and also a very versatile player. But we spoke with him this week, and uh, what a what a warm-hearted guy and a, a person who will do anything you want. I mean, he can play running back, he can play wide receiver, he can hold. He was a holder on a bad snap for the extra point. Number 12 is a good football player. Third down and eight. Tubbs and Lindsay. Matkin, good protection throw. Trying to hit the slant and picked off. It's Todd Johnson. Johnson to the 30 and out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Matkin had to make the tackle after he threw the interception. Just exactly. I was starting to say the one thing you can't do here is have one picked off. You need to play field position. He doesn't see uh, underneath. He does not see where Johnson is or he wouldn't have thrown that ball. If you see Johnson, you either hold it a second longer or throw it a little higher. But that kills Mississippi State, although Madkin comes down and makes the tackle. The touch Johnson so active for the Gators. He had that 76-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown earlier against Middle Tennessee and now nearly took the interception back. Gators in business as Brock Berlin has checked in for the Gators at quarterback. Number nine, the freshman with the handoff. And you know what? You tell me. Down 5-0, time for a quarterback change? Well... Steve Spurrier handles quarterbacks different than anyone in the country. And you either like it or you don't. But one thing you have to say about him is that he wins football games. Now, the guy coming in, Brock Berlin, had better be prepared because he was a third-team quarterback last week. He jumped ahead of Russ, or excuse me, Rex Grossman, and he comes in with credentials that are unbelievable out of high school. Second down and seven for the freshman out of Freeport, Louisiana. Four wide receivers in Berlin, sets in the shotgun. And now the play clock runs out, and a flag is down. Dead ball. 
Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Take it down. Steve Spurrier, the, you can see, calls the plays for the Gators on the offensive end. Has a very special relationship. Of course, you, you know what he did as a quarterback at Florida. Very, very tight relationship with his QB. Again, four wide receivers set. Berlin throws to the backfield. It's Graham. Nothing to by the dogs at the 31-yard line, and Fred Smoot, you know, you said he's a talker. You know, you can talk all you want when you make good defensive plays like that. You bet. He backs this up. This play is a, is a nice little throw and catch for Berlin to get warmed up. Graham has a chance, but Smoot doesn't get faked out a bit. If he doesn't make that tackle, that turns into a long game, but Fred Smoot is as good a cornerback as there is. Fletcher at Wisconsin is the only guy that I've seen that I would put on his level. For another quarterback change. Now it's the third stringer, Rex Grossman. Number eight comes in, fires, hooks up on his throw, first pass to Caldwell. So Palmer doesn't work out, Berlin doesn't work out, and now Steve Spurrier says, hey, Rex, I know I knocked you down to 13, but once you come in in the first quarter, down five on the road. This is unbelievable. I mean, t in talking to Steve this week, he was so disappointed that uh, Rex Grossman hadn't picked up some of the coverages and gotten his team into the right protection last week, and now he's in in the first quarter with his team trailing. Well, after the timeout, Dean, Steve Spurrier has gone back to his starter, Jesse Palmer, so he'll set her, settle under center on fourth down and one. Double tight end set with Wells and Walker. Up and over goes Gillespie. That is close. It depends on the spot. Nothing fancy. Power for ball. Lead blocker. Gillespie gets a nice leap. And it will be close. Watch the, the fellas up front. Usually, to stop that play, you've got to have a, a linebacker or a pig. <laughs> a pig or a dog flying over and meeting you in midair. Going to stretch a chain. They held them anyway. Missed it by about four or five inches. And boy, that defense, how many times during the season can you keep going to the well defensively? Well, if you have those types of players and you have Joe Lee Dunn, you can go to that well. As Steve Spurrier upset at Gillespie, criticizing him, I'm sure, for taking the early leap. He should never take off. You know, he leaped and still didn't get hit and didn't make it. So he should have kept his feet. Indiana formation. Mississippi State trying to put the ground game together. Dante Walker. Well, that's your sports knowledge. Play AFLAC trivia at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. A lot of different players in and out of that floor to defense right now trying to find the answer. One of the players not in there, number 13, Alex Brown. Four-yard gain for Walker. That brings up second down and six. Rankin, play action throws in the middle. Good catch by Huntington. First down, Bulldogs, 32-yard line. Marquand Manuel made the tackle for the Florida Gators. Matkin's going to have to take that, Craig. I think he's going to have trouble over the middle against this defensive pressure. I think he's going to have to take the flanks. If they give you a five, six-yard out, take it. Try to make some yardage after the catch. Bulldogs, but you know, right now they're on the ground. And Walker, Dante Walker, walking through not a seam, Dean, but a mighty big hole. Well, you have a blitz coming from one side by Natillo, and that just that the, the play couldn't have been called any better. A void area hit by the straight ahead dive, and Mississippi State has them. A little off balance. Sparky Woods, who has been under some criticism as well, the offensive coordinator here at Mississippi State, 
except for that interception, has really had a, a, a great first quarter. First down, Mississippi State. Under three minutes left in the opening quarter. Becky Sherrill continues to write notes. We'll redo that play in the third quarter is what that says. Dante Walker now over 30 yards in this first quarter. Williamson to full back. Chase out of the pocket is Mackin. He's dangerous on the run. Good strong to the sideline. Pass by Huntington. Out of bounds at the 42. Mateel, the linebacker, had to make the stop. Quarterbacks of today need to be mobile. And watch Madkin here as he gets back in the pocket and gets all the pressure. Normally, a quarterback goes down here, but the mobility, the athleticism of Madkin gets him on the corner, and he's able to throw it running to his left. He's able to fire a, a long ball, a terrific play by the quarterback. First down, up the gap, not much, as Walker is wrapped up for that front of Florida, led by Clint Mitchell. Now, you mentioned about all the different looks that John Hall, the coordinator of Florida defensively, is trying to look. They've got Gurley, they've had Warren, Ellis Brown, Scott Chambers. They're still looking for that combination. Well, and it's so unusual because these Spurrier's teams have had such good defense. Bob Stoops, the last coordinator down at Florida, had some terrific teams, and I think that John Hook has struggled in the shadow of Bob Stoops. Now Mississippi State has called timeout as Wayne Matkin trots to the sideline with a 5-0 lead. Well, I hear a bark here in the first quarter, 206. Mississippi State Bulldogs on top of the Florida Gators by a score of 5 nothing. Westerfield being hit a 19-yard field goal, and then Jesse Palmer dropped for the safety, and it's 5 nothing. Second down, 10. A shocker so far. Not much. Misdirection. Walker wrapped up. Hit by Shepard. And Alex Brown, the All-American from a year ago. Number 13. Alex Brown here on your right. Comes in, and, and this guy has all, the, has all the ability in the world. Alex Brown is a guy that takes some plays off. And he does not take that play off. And, you know, this is the time of the game you need your best players in there. Hope brings him back in. Farrier in the middle needs to do a better job. Number 43. Third down conversions, the Dogs one of four. Matkin feels the pressure, that's out of trouble, and he's sacked at the 45. Now the Gators step it up on the last couple of defensive plays led by Gerald Warren. Well, Ferrier must have hurt us because although he didn't make the play, watch 43 come right inside. Matkin will duck under him, but look at big 61. Warren gets a bull rush on his man. And he's there after a failure. Can't get him. Prentice Cole in the punt for Mississippi State. And Shepard back at his own 10-yard line for the Florida Gators. Short kick angles to the sideline and then takes a bounce and dies around the 24. Well, premiering this Friday on CBS, the chase is on to the most talked about new drama of the season. Tim Daly and Michael T. Williamson star in The Fugitive. That premieres this Friday right here on CBS. Cannot wait to see that one. I'm a fugitive guy. <laughs> you, you watched it too. Oh, sure. You? Now the old series, and then you had the movie, and now back. That's right. Yeah. Palmer returns. Well, at quarterback. We've seen all three. They only, they only suited three. I don't think they have a fourth. In motion to tight end Walker. Jesse Palmer, good protection. Throws downfield. Oh, in and out of the hands of Taylor Jacobs. Incomplete. Tough catch. you got to make it, though. It's a game of big plays. Taylor Jacobs had a chance right there. You know, what, what it tells me with Jesse Palmer being benched and bringing in the two others is that Steve Spurrier is saying some mistakes are unacceptable. And the, the safety that you took, Jesse, that is unacceptable. I don't think he would have taken him out for virtually any other mistake. He's been playing really well. 
Back it down to Tim from the shotgun. Palmer throws once again on the hands. The numbers of Rache Caldwell, Kendall Rob uh, Robertson, the left corner, the cover man for the Bulldogs. Florida well, caught the ball better last week, but it was against Tennessee. They've had uh, unusual drops this year. And if you do that to a defense led by that guy, Joe Lee Dunn, if you don't take advantage when the opportunities are there, it can be a very long day. You notice he doesn't wear the headset. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to hear anybody talking. <laughs> you know what? He's got his game plan upstairs, and that's all he needs. There aren't many like Joe Lee Dunn. 0 for 3 on third down conversion. Palmer 2 of 8 so far in this first quarter. Throws again downfield. Incomplete. Nearly picked off. Bulldogs had a good look. And the intended receiver was Caldwell. And that brings up fourth down. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm, you know, if you have the chance to make the play, the play before, Jacobs had a chance. He didn't take advantage. The next time, not really a very good opportunity but for Florida because the defense have done pressing. They have Hagen in the backfield. That's not a good opportunity. Alan Ryan, who's averaging just under 43 yards of punt, back at his 10-yard line. And Larry Huntington will re return for Mississippi State. Good kick. Huntington up to 30. Has a seam at the 35-40, down to midfield, and two flags. One at the 35 and one on the other side of the 50-yard line around the 37. So far, this game has gone the way Jackie Sherrill would have hoped in that Jackie's teams have always played this way. They play good, hard defense, they play field position, and they play special teams. Yep. And he's won a lot of games doing that. Steve Shaw with the call. There were two flags, both flags holding on the return team will penalize 10 yards from the spot of the foul on the further back one, and it'll be first down Mississippi State. Yeah, they don't double those penalties together and move them back. They take the, they mark it off from the one farthest toward the Mississippi State end zone, so they start on the 25-yard line, and had it not been for the interception that Madkin threw, field position would have been very one-sided in this quarter, but even with the interception on the Madkin mistake, Florida has not been able to score on this defense. Final seconds of the first quarter. Two wide receivers set to the near side. Napkin under center in the eye formation. He wants to throw. Pat throws to the near side and is pulled in. And still rumbling is Huntington. Great decision the first right down. there, Craig. Great decision. He wanted to run the post. He wanted to throw it in the middle. If he had, it was not going to work. He reluctantly came off to his second receiver on the sideline. Uh, Dean, I was just going to say, as we look at the flag here, in quarterback terminology, that's just checking off receivers, going down the progression. Right? Yeah, progression. He, he goes from his primary receiver. Five-yard face pass on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. It'll be a first down, and we will extend the quarter one play. Can't end the quarter with a penalty, but you're right, as Steve Spurrier is getting a little classroom work in on the sideline right now, but you're exactly right. Wayne Matkin that time wanted to go over the middle. That was his first read, and his progression got him back to the sideline. Boy, total yards in this game. Who would have ever wow. thought 112 yards? This is a bunch that's not averaging over. They're under 300 yards in offense per game as it is. 272, 94th rank in the NCAA. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. On the ground, the Central Miller breaks the tackle. That's a 50. Still on his feet. Still on his feet and driven back at the 44. Gus Scott finally brought him down, but a tremendous run by DeCenzo Miller. That's the end of the first quarter. Mississippi State on top, 5-0. We'll return to Scott Field right after this message and a word from your local station. Start of the second quarter here in Starkville, Mississippi. Craig Bowler Jack along with Dean Blevins. And the rest of our talented crew. What a setting this is. This is absolutely perfect. Mississippi State with the football. First down up by five. Matt can play action. Feels pressure. Head to the sideline. Tries to make the turn and smartly make another good decision. Walking out of bounds and not, not hit hard. 
For an update on Virginia Tech and Boston College, back to New York City and Tim Brando. Craig, we've been talking about instant replay. We did so on college football today, earlier today. This is a second down play. Tim Hasselbeck to Jamal Burke, clearly down at the one-yard line. They give him the touch. It's 14-14 in Chestnut Hill. Hey, Timmy, uh, don't forget Gaffney. There was some controversy with that touchdown to Tennessee with the Florida Gators. I don't know how much controversy. It was not a touchdown. Simzo Miller. Florida is not tackling. It's a terrific run. Take nothing away from Miller. But Florida won two, three. Three men should have had him. And then he outruns the rest. Florida defensively is not getting it done. Second rushing touchdown. And now the Bulldogs will try to go for two. Dante Walker in the backfield as Nashton checks and looks to the inside. Did he get in? Yeah. Two-point conversion is good. Brindle. It was a great checkoff team by Matkin. He looked at the far sideline, came back to the inside, and hooked up with Brindle. Well, the cowbells are ringing here in Starkville. Mississippi State, 13-0. Now, DeCenzo Miller sending his wishes oh, home. Man. The junior out of oh, Weir, Mississippi. Just 20 minutes down the road. Four plays, 74 yards, 23 ticks off the clock. He's the one that wants to go home and eat fried chicken and have homemade ice cream <laughs> mama isn't he he says you know what's the greatest thing he'd go to college he's got great friends but it's just a quick trip home for That's some good right. cooking a lot of homegrown mississippi players that play for jack and Cheryl. shepherd takes it at the four yard line Ludo shepherd 20 dances to the 25 hit and brought down hard by the 27. <laughs> And Dean, let's take a look right now at the uh, Exxon virtual playbook. Well, Steve Spurrier is known as one of the most innovative minds in football. And here he is uh, getting rid of the pressure, trying to, to beat the pressure. And right here he knows that this end is going to blitz and come in. So he goes backside with a pitch to Graham. They did this last week very successfully. And Spurrier is going to need to tap into all of that genius right now because he's playing against a talented and fired up defense. Another quarterback change, Grossman, Rex Grossman back in. Hand off, and boy, this Bulldog defense very much fired up. Craig Bowler, Jack, Dean Blevins here in Starkville, Mississippi. 13-0, Bulldogs, and now Steve Spurrier continues to jockey quarterbacks. He's used three. He's giving Grossman a second chance. Steve Spurrier just sending a message or what? Well, it's crazy. His message is you better play smart. You know, he had his quarterback starter stand in the end zone and get the safety, and then Berlin gets the... He didn't get the playoff soon enough. They had a five-yard delay, and he goes out, and so his now third-team quarterback was in the last play, and now it's Palmer's time. Comes back in, throws, and incomplete is the call. And down around the shoe tops to bring that ball in, Jabbar Gaffney, the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Once again, it's an opportunity to make a play. Stop and go. He's wide open. This is a short-arm throw Ooh. by Jesse Palmer, who misses another opportunity. And I don't know how much of it has to do with confidence, but... When you're pulled out, put back in, pulled out, some kids put a lot of pressure on themselves. That was an easy throw and should have been a touchdown. Palmer came in completing 52% of his passes. Now the Gators is 0 for 4 on third down conversions here, looking at third and 10 for the shotgun. Palmer, a little quick throw on the slant. And stacked up, caught by Caldwell. Great stop there. But short of the first down. You bet it is. You bet it is. Mississippi State in great position. And now will Steve Spurrier go for it? This would be quite a gamble. 
He will go for it, huh? Clock running. You see just over 13 minutes left in the first half. He's gone. Third ranked in the country, Stu Spurrier and his Florida Gators. He'll do the double, double tight end set with Wells and Walker. Now the Gators already 0 for 2 on fourth down five. Fourth and short. Going to be close. Graham was chopped down in the backfield, but it will depend on the spot. Dorsett Davis. He didn't get it. The first to uh, make contact. My eyes are faltering a little bit at this age, but from this vantage point, Craig, I don't think he got it. Oh, it's Spurrier. He flips that visor down just a little bit lower. Well, if he keeps up, he'll have it down around his waist before this one's over. Once again, the chains. Gonna be short. Not close. Football by football length and more. I'll tell you what, if you're gonna go for fourth down against Mississippi State, you're just recognizing that it's as tough a defense as you're gonna find anywhere. Mississippi State having its way right now all over Florida. Well, once again, Mississippi State's defense holds the Gators on a fourth down. Gators 0 for 3 on fourth down tries, and Mississippi State in fine field position here early in the second quarter, up by 13. Napkin pedals back, feels the pressure, and takes a seat. Gerard Warren picks up the sack, and Dean, we take you back to 1992. The last time these two, these two teams met in Starkville, the date was October 1st, 92. Michael Davis keyed the Bulldogs' route. He rumbles 35 yards for a Mississippi State score in what turned out to be a 30-6 victory. It was not a good day for Steve Spurrier or night. I believe that was on a Thursday night. As he was, it was handed to Spurrier and the Gators as it's being handed today. Bring it down to 19, a loss of nine. Matthew airs it out, no receiver, and nearly intercepted by Ratliff. Update on Virginia Tech, Boston College, back to New York. Craig and Dean, we talked so much about Michael Vick, but Spencer Tillman on College Football Today told you there's a second part of that arsenal. Lee Suggs, 24 yards for the touchdown. Hokey, hokey, hokey high. The boys from BBI up seven. <laughs> you didn't know Tim Singh on the side, did you? Uh, he can do anything. <laughs> Mr. Versatility. Well, I'll tell you, Suggs ought to be named Stud. That was, that was a heck of a run. Third and 19 at the 45-yard line. Let me say before this play, you can't afford a turnover for Mississippi State. Napkin lets the track to go by. He's dangerous on the run. Makes a little stop at the 40, and then tackled knee high around the 39 by the strong safety. Todd Johnson. Yeah, Johnson was involved in so many tackles the past couple of weeks that he got the nod today over Dixon back there at free safety. But... That play was fine. I mean, Madkin wasn't able to convert a third and long, but it's field position now for Jackie Sherrill's team. That's the way they play. And he'll have a chance to pin them deep. They're looking like they might consider going, but I don't think that that would be any option. The only thing they might consider is a long field goal. But they go the, the other route. Now they're going to punt, and Cole won't come in. This time it's uh, the backup quarterback, the third stringer, or the second stringer, Kevin Fant. Florida. Florida, best beware right now. Well, let me get your thought on this. If you want to delay a game, why don't you just tell the official? Dead ball, delay of game on the offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. In a punting situation, Dean, just say, give me five. They didn't want to delay Jackie Sherrill all over a couple of his players right now. Mississippi State had something up its sleeve right there. Florida may have been fortunate. Fant the kick. Good high hanger. Takes a bounce inside the five. The time bat it back out. But a touchback, and Florida will have it at the 20-yard line. So the Gators down 13. Well, it's a warm day in Starkville, Mississippi. You can see the, the cool zone is thrown out the mist. Mississippi State over the third, third ranked Gators, 15-0. Palmer in at quarterback. 
to the sideline. Kite. And a first down for the Florida Gators. That's the first first down that the Gators have had since the third play of the game. Well, the Gators were expecting to do a lot of hitches and, and short step, and that's one of the first times they have done it. Quarterbacks today, they have the numbers. Palmer, Berlin, Grossman. I mean, take your pick. It's, it's just been a revolving door across the way for Steve Spurrier. All the receivers are not there now. Alex Willis, the co-captain, is out with an injury, and you know, they could use the speech to John Capel, who's over in Sydney. Nice rainbow to the new something complete. He had a good look at Roche Caldwell. Incomplete the call. Smoot, the right corner on coverage. Well, tomorrow on the CBS Sports Spectacular, the fastest racers on two wheels let it rip at speeds up to 175 miles an hour at the Rinchette.com Superbike Classic. Check that out tomorrow right here on CBS Sports. You know, Capel, I mentioned a, a moment ago, he is one of the fastest in the world at 200 meters. He won his first two heats, and he finishes dead last in the finals in the 200 meter in Sydney yesterday. Palmer throws a bullet over the middle. Intercepted. It's smooth. Second interception of the season for Fred Smooth, the senior, just down the road in Jacksonville. Jackson, Mississippi. We're trying to figure out where Palmer's throwing this. He has Gaffney underneath, number 10. And up top, he has Hogabrook. And he throws it right to Fred Smoot. That was an easy one for Smoot, who has his seventh career inter interception. But Jesse Palmer's had a very good year, Craig, and a very bad day. What's well, amazing, Smoot played a couple years at junior college ball at Hines Community College. Uh -huh. Right back to the air comes Mississippi State. And that's Lindsey, the junior out of Marietta, who makes a reception. Todd Johnson makes the tackle. See, one thing about Matkin, though, he's going to throw and share that ball around. He likes his tight end and Donald Lee. He's three deep with the split end with Grendel, Parker, and Lindsey. He's also with the flankers with Huntington, Justin Jenkins. Well, you're right, and right above that graphic, right in there, is Grindle, who is the best receiver, number 15. Keep an eye on him. Well, he makes up the pass to the run. Back to Dante Walker, the sophomore. Close to the first down. He needed to get to the 49. Florida's defense has had a great year in forcing turnovers. 14 of them so far this season. Unlike the rest of the year, except last week, which is kind of a, that's an unusual, that's an atypical situation with Kentucky playing, but most of the season they've given a lot of yards, instead of Tennessee and some field goals, but they've forced the turnovers. Today they haven't really done that. Third down and short. It's back that backfield. Boy, action, knocking down it. And the flags come out. They wanted the tight end, Donald Lee, as he released. Marquan Manuel, the strong safety. Oh, offensive. Florida gets a break here, in my opinion. Offensive pass interference. They call a push off on Lee. Pass interference on the offense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. I saw the tight end right here break free play action great call i thought there was a hold right there but they called the push a little bit later against manual they say lee pushed it, it it appeared that there might have been a hold earlier on that call and that is a play that is huge for the university of florida now well, five penalties now whistle against mississippi state for 40 yards but clock running down to five as napkin steps up and fires at the near sideline complete Todd Johnson right there to make the tackle on Lindsay. I'm talking about a play that would have had Mississippi State with a first down 
And around inside the 30 yard line, Craig. Instead, they end up having to pump back. So uh, the most controversial call for sure in this game so far. Cole in once again to punt at his own 30 yard line. Lito Shepard. High, high hanger and a fair catch taken at the 15 yard line. Super kick. Well, U.S. Army Heritage. You know, cowbells have been ringing in Starkville, Dean, since the 50s. Legend has it that a Jersey cow wandered onto the football field during an Ole Miss-Mississippi State game back in the 30s. The Bulldogs went on to win, and the fans, they gave up the cow and have been ringing proudly every shape and size of cowbell you can find. <laughs> and that's our U.S. Army Heritage. And they bring in the, you know, opponents despise oh, yeah. the bell. Yeah, I, I can imagine how loud it is down there. And, and one thing I don't understand is that the conference banned it. Something like outside noises. Mm -hmm. you, you can't bring something to the stadium like that. Right. And uh, yet, the Mississippi State fans get to do that, and they use it to their advantage. And now the Gators step to the line, and Palmer looks the defense over, and they call the timeout. Timeout, Florida. We'll take a break here in Starkville. Mississippi State up by 13 over third rank Florida. Steve Spurrier, the head coach, looking for some answers. He's tried three different quarterbacks. He's jockeyed in Palmer, Grossman, Berlin. Berlin came back with Grossman. They came back with Palmer. And Jesse Palmer under center with four wide receivers down 13. Throws to the near side, oh, right in the arms of Kite. Kelvin Kite, he was a high school All-American. He can burn, but yet you got to have the football. Yeah, you, you can burn, but you, you've got to carry the pigskin with you. And, and that time, Palmer was throwing it to the outside number. I mean, he, he had the right idea, but he threw it too far outside. And it compounded that when Kite took his eye off the ball. Sloppy first half for Florida. Boy, 4 of 15. 60 yards in the interception for Palmer. From the shotgun, again. To the near side, caught, dropped. Well, that had a visor on the ground following that one. And again, the intended receiver was tight. No, the, the visor's off. Yeah, so is the headset. Well, that time, Jesse Palmer stood tall in the pocket, fired it to Kite, who has the dubious distinction of dropping two pigs in two plays. You've got pig skins and real pigs back here, huh? The yeah, there. yeah. 0 for 5 on third down conversion. Farmer again, shotgun formation, four wide receivers. Farmer under pressure, throws and complete. Pulled down by Roche Caldwell. The boy Palmer paid dearly. Well, this was the best play of the afternoon for Palmer as he sat back in the pocket. Blade will come at him, number 54 from the middle, as he absolutely overpowers Jorgensen. But it was great concentration after the nice throw by Rache Caldwell to move the sticks. And Blade is down. First down, Gators. They continue to spread the field offensively. Throw this time to the far side. Breaking the tackle is Gaffney. And Gaffney at the 45-yard line. Ellis Wims chased him down from his right-end spot. Well, it's all in the family for the Gaffneys. Derek Gaffney, Don Gaffney, and uh, Wes Chandler, all in that family. Wes Chandler, the godfather, and uh, to Gaffney here, number 10. Gaffney, a heck of a player. Wes Chandler, a number one draft pick yeah. out of Florida to the New Orleans Saints. He's played my buddy Tinker Owens down there. Well, Tinker was a player at Oklahoma. He bet he was. Palmer throws over the middle, up on the ladder for the catch. Boy, Taylor Jacobs. And right now, the Gators are trying to attack the middle of the field. Josh Morgan makes the stop for Mississippi State, but a flag down. Well, they're getting some rhythm here. We'll see what happens with the penalty, but they're, they're getting Mississippi State's corners off. They're able to throw some hitches, get some timing. Five-yard face mask on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. First down. This was not the easiest throw, and it was not an easy catch. Jacobs concentrates, 
really well. Watch number six as this ball is a little bit behind him, and it's a difficult catch as you're running straight ahead and have to pull both arms back to secure it. Three wide receivers to the near side. First and ten. Florida high snap pulled down by Palmer. Throws. Little pitch and catch. And Hogabrook makes the grab at another flag down. Well, I don't know if there was contact made. Mississippi State jumped. But if there's no contact, that would not be a penalty. Dead ball. No. Full start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. You know, Craig, Florida, I'm sure Steve Furrier is just livid right now. It's not only the drop passes, but it's the quarterback taking the safety. It's delay of game. It's bad snaps from shotgun. You know, the center has not done a good job of putting the ball where the quarterback can catch it with ease. It's, it's really been a dysfunctional first half. Blitz. Gutty call by the defensive coordinator, Jolie Dunn, but really not unexpected as Eugene Clinton, one of the dog safeties, comes in untouched and buries Jesse Palmer. Yeah, he will come from the top of your screen up here, and Jesse Palmer can feel him coming, but he doesn't get away as those dog safeties do come a lot. I mean, he, you, you talk about blitzing, Jolie Dunn will try to outnumber you on every play, and it's up to the quarterback to find a hot receiver or escape. Bring it down, Palmer sets and fires, incomplete. Coldwell tried to come back, but Josh Morgan was riding his back, so that stops the clock with 7.03 left in the first half. There's Jolie Dunn, he wears the no headsets, says I have absolutely no, no reason for them. I don't like hearing people talk to me. Yeah, and he says, you know what, I know what I'm doing. I said, Coach, don't you want to have the input from your assistant coaches? He says, no, nope, why would I want that? He says, it's my defense, and... All I know are the numbers speak for themselves. He is a very good coach. Well, Palmer's out. Rex Grossman in at quarterback for the Gators. Grossman throws complete. And a great tackle around the shoelaces on Gaffney. For an update on Michael Vick and Virginia Tech, back to Tim Brando in New York. It's official. His assault on the Heisman is underway. Watch this. Not many guys can pull this one off, Dean Blevins, as you well know. All told, 112 yards rushing on nine attempts for Michael Vick. He continues to amaze. The Gators will try now a field goal spotted at the 39. This will be a 49-yard attempt by Jeff Chandler. Good snap. The kick is away. Long enough. And good from 49. Chandler from 49. And the Gators are on the board. 19 left before the half, and the Gators finally find the scoreboard down 13 to 3. Long kick, and there will be no return. Bulldogs start this drive on their own 20 yard line. Nine plays, Dean, 51 yards, and Chandler capped it off with a 49 yard field goal, his longest of the season, and just over 250 off the clock. Well, Chandler's a very good kicker. He has pulled some this year, but year in, year out, he is a very good kicker. You know, Florida, you normally wouldn't be excited about getting three points in that situation. But True. having a donut up there, three looks pretty good to him. Well, a team especially that came in averaging 45 points a game. First and 10, Mississippi State from their own 20-yard line. From the eye, napkin, quick hand, kick it up the middle. Good hold, Justin Griffith found it, turn on the Jets again. He's that tailback, fullback combo player. And Todd Johnson, we called his name many times a day for the Gators. The strong safety makes a stop. This is a real surprise to me that they are able to go right up the gut. Nothing fancy. I mean, you've got Gurley in there, 99, and Warren's a terrific player. They moved Tron with favor over to play in the middle, but they are not anywhere to be found. Play action for the Bulldogs falls incomplete. Well, premiering Friday on CBS, if you think dead men tell no tales, you've never met these crime scene investigators. William Peterson and Marge Hogenberger star in a side of crime solving you have never seen. CSI, crime scene investigation. Don't miss a premiere this Friday after The Fugitive on CBS. Second down at 10. Well, don't you know they'd love to run some clock here, Craig? 
Just under six minutes left, and uh, Mississippi State Bulldogs up by 10. They pitch Dante Walker to the 35. Maybe lost a half a yard. Hit by Mike Nateel. We've seen a lot of flags, Dean, here in the first half, and another one down at the 35-yard line. Well, I believe this one will be a hole. Oh, it's not a hole, but it is against number 97 in white. Ian Scott gets banged up on this play. Mississippi State, one of the most penalized teams in the country this year. This will be a 15-yard walk. Here's the offense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Second down. And that chop block went on Ian Scott. And he was the player I was referring to, a true freshman out of Gainesville who is seeing some playing time because of the struggles inside. Hope he's okay. You never like to see anyone get hurt, especially on an illegal chop block. Second down at 25. Atkin throws up the screen, up the middle, and weaving his way as Griffith. Stacks and dropped down around the 30-yard line. Hardman led the way for the Florida Gators. Thirty-yard line, gain of ten yards. Third down. Well, this is another one of those situations for Mississippi State where it'd be nice to convert, keep moving down and hopefully score if you're a Mississippi State fan, but what you can afford is a turnover. And I think that Madkin has learned his lesson. Third down and 15. Settles back in that shotgun. Heavy pressure over the side step at once, but not twice. And for an update on Lou Holtz in South Carolina, let's get it from Tim Brando. Tim? All right, Craig, you remember Phil Petty was injured on that last play before the young kid Kimry threw the touchdown pass to Jermell Kelly? Well, Petty's back in the game, hits Jermell Kelly here. It's now 13 to 10, Alabama. Wow, Lou Holtz and the magic of South Carolina. Well, it's funny how quickly things can turn around because Alabama, a team considered a national championship caliber club before the season, and they have some players in South Carolina hadn't won one in 21 games, and now they're down there battling. Cole back to punt. Shepard will return for the Gators. Knuckleball kick taken at the 34. What a, what a hit by Julius Griffith. Boy, he hit him around just the shins. And it was up and down, Dipsy Doodle. And Julius Griffith, the brother of Justin Griffith. When you talk about special teams, look at him go right to the ankles. He knew that the two-yard halo rule, the six-foot circle around the, around the punt returner is in effect. Well, coming up on the Action Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. They've got the scores and all the highlights, all the latest college football news. Thanks to him. That's on the Action Halftime Report. First down, Florida. Grossman, the quarterback for the Gators, will roll out and throw to the flat. Right on the fingertips. It's the freshman, Rand Carthon. So now, not does Steve Spurrier mix up his quarterbacks, but he throws another twist in with, with a redshirt freshman running back. Well, and they came back to this. This was open earlier on the fourth down try when Frazier dropped the pass. So they knew they had this, so they go freshman to freshman, and they have a chance to cut this deficit. Well, linebacker Mario Hagan was the injured Bulldog. He's up under his own power. Last week, a superb game against South Carolina. Ten tackles and returned a fumble 27 yards for a touchdown, and he can motor at 6'3", 253. Oh, he loves playing back there, doesn't he? And getting his, getting, not having to, to be down in a stance, he likes to be able to run around. And You know, what he tell us the other day? He was up to, to 280, 285, and he dropped about 30 pounds. He wasn't even trying to lose the no. weight. He says, I actually had I said, what do you eat? He goes, well, pretty much anything I want. <laughs> Hagan's out. Jason Clark checks in. Grossman's still the quarterback. He's three for three. And passing for 53 yards. Bill set his feet and throw. Deep ball down the far sideline. Incomplete. Yep, there is a flag at the 19-yard line. A little bump and a push. We'll see which way it goes.
The referees very busy here in the first two quarters. Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. The hold comes up right there, and that's a good call because Robertson did, in fact, hold his man. He didn't need to do that. Clinton was over the top and was there. That hold is a 10-yard penalty from the spot, or from the line of scrimmage, and it would have been a 15-yard penalty had it been interference. 345 left. Florida Gators, very unproductive offensively, but now knocking on the door, down 10. And they've got a first down at the 28-yard line. Well, they'd love to go in 13-10, wouldn't they? Yeah. Grossman sidesteps and throws! Incomplete. Now, there will be some coaches upset with that. I, I, don't, I don't have any idea. The play wasn't whistled down, was it, Craig? No. You looked at the Mississippi State secondary, and they, they had their backs turned towards the ball, thinking that Grossman was down. Yeah, he does a great job here. I was about to say he doesn't feel the pressure behind. He's a young guy. But not only does he feel it, but he gets out of the grasp of Pig Prather and Clinton. But when he throws it downfield, I believe that was Jacobs down the field, was not aware that he was still alive with it. So the two dog safeties went on the double blitz. Double call. Double call. <laughs> Second down, 10 again. Heavy pressure. Grossman down at the 37. Yeah. Once again, Pig. Pig Prather. Willie Blade. Steve Spurrier motioning. Throw it away, young guy. He says, Rex, when you get this pressure, Get rid of it, easier said than done, but he's outside that tackle box, and this year, the new rule is you can throw that ball anywhere, throw it in the stands as long as it's past the line of scrimmage, and you don't have to suffer that loss. Well, Rex Grossman, redshirt freshman, playing behind the senior, Jesse Palmer, and also they've got the freshman, Brock Berlin. Third down and 18, all three have seen playing time in this first half. From the shotgun, three wide receivers at the near side. Heavy pressure again. They try to counter with the screen pass to the far side, breaking down the sideline. Gillespie at the one foot line, and Fred Smoot saved the touchdown. Everything was to screen left and to the right, right side of the field. There was only one guy left there on the corner to make the play. And Gillespie took advantage of that. He didn't need much of a crack. Smoot saves it, but a terrific play call, and Spurrier knew what Mississippi State was doing that time. 34 yards, and now the Gators will go with a double tight end set with Walker and Wells and try to punch this football in. They pitch it out. Green. Touchdown. And that was a huge conversion for Florida to be able to convert that third. And then you come down here with the momentum, toss sweep left, and he walks it into the end zone. Good block out front by Thomas Moody, 72. You know, they have the two backs there, Graham in front of you and Gillespie in front of him. Kind of a one-two punch. Graham the power and Gillespie shifty and watch his shiftiness on this one. And that one's Graham in. And here's Steve Spurrier. He has uh, watched his Gators score nine unanswered points. <laughs> Get in there, he says. Yes, sir. That's the lean working. Yes, sir. Extra point to come by Chandler and uh, down 15-0. Watch out, watch out. got an injured uh, bulldog on that far side of the end zone. That will hold up this extra point try. What a conversion on that third down, though. They converted that and were able to not only get points, get a touchdown, silence the crowd, perhaps silenced because of the injury as well. Now the injured uh, player is Robertson. Kendall Robertson, number 24. Trying to regroup after what he called his worst game as a Bulldog last week against... South Carolina. And he's going to go right to the locker room here with 2.27 left and that left ankle or foot gingerly being looked at.
Things turn quickly, don't they? Third and long. Looks bad for Florida. They convert. They score. They gain the momentum. And a player's out for Mississippi State. Now Chandler 21 of 22 on point after attempts. This would bring Florida to within three. Chandler's kick is up. A flag is down. And the Bulldog was jumping on that near side. Offside on the defense. The penalty is declined. Extra point is good. So Chandler connects, and Florida has answered with 10 unanswered points. 13-10. We'll be back. 2.27 left before the half, and a strong kick. No return. That's Pig Prather taking a knee. And Dean, the last time these two teams met, 1993, October 2nd in Gainesville. What a performance by this guy. Remember number seven, Danny Werfel, passed for 449 yards, three touchdowns, the best ever by an SEC freshman. The Gators won that game 38-24. In that game, nearly 900 yards of total pass yardage <laughs> between these two teams. Well, Danny Werfel drew the most catchable ball that I have ever seen. That was a good example of it. He just lofted that one there, but he was a heck of a leader and a thrower. On second effort is Vicenzo Miller. Dean, let me ask you now, this is a, a, a Mississippi State team that had a crowd very much in their back pocket uh -huh. here at Scott Field. They're up 13-0, and all of a sudden, people looking around at the scoreboard, despite the fact that Florida has not played well, used three different quarterbacks. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a close ball game. Yeah, it's hard for a crowd to stay at a crescendo level for three and a half hours. You can't expect them to do that. And I think they know the mighty Gators offensively. Boy, they're going to score some points on it. The 43-yard line, and Lito Shepard was doing a Lito shuffle. I mean, that was a hit and a half on Miller. Well, it was, but the stunning thing today is the defense of Florida, or the lack thereof. Look at the terrific block out front by Lee. Desenzo hmm. Miller was able to see that crack and slip through it. 20 years of age, you know, he's a former Mississippi High School Player of the Year, scored 118 touchdowns during his prep career. They trade off with some fresh legs. Dante Walker, a high school All-American, comes in. So, loaded in the backfield is Jackie Sherrill, and Hardman made the tackle. You know, normally I would have thought that Florida would have been, with a typical defense, they would have tried to shut down Mississippi State, use their timeouts, get the ball back, try to go score. Now it's just the opposite. They are moving the football down the field. Second down with under a minute left on the track. And again, popping right up the middle behind their center. Michael Fair, Tommy Watson, Courtney Lee. And another big gainer for Dante Walker. And Shepard had to come up from the corner spot to make the stop. Well, it's a great place to be on offense because Florida has the numbers back guarding against the pass. So you have a good numbers advantage offensively to run it. You can just pick whichever way you want to go. If needed, Mississippi State with two timeouts remaining, and they're going to take one here. Wasted time there, Craig. They wasted 10, 12 seconds coming out of the huddle, not knowing what they were doing. If they were going to end up calling a timeout, they should have done it before that time. And Dean, you look at this winning streak, Florida, unranked opponents, 72. Florida State, I mean, it's not even close down at 19, Purdue, Kansas State, yeah. Nebraska. Look at these towers. I mean, Nebraska, 12 in a row, 72 in a row. And by virtue of the South Carolina upset over Mississippi State last week, that streak very much in jeopardy today because Mississippi State was in the top 25 before that loss. That is an unbelievable statistic. You know, Mississippi State drops and, and Lou Holtz jumps in. Right, right. 40 seconds remain in this very interesting first half. Steve Spurrier uh, looking at his bench, trying to find answers. Three different quarterbacks. Jackie Sherrill has gone the distance with this young man, Wayne Matkin, a junior out of Huntsville, Alabama. Mississippi State is capable of knocking it through for a field goal right there where they are right now. I was watching Scott Westerfield kick before the game. 
He was knocking them in routinely from this spot. First and ten from the 31. Mackey pumps and throws to the and incomplete. He wanted his uh, toe-back, full-back combination player and Justin Griffith. Shepard back on coverage from the corner. That stops the clock with 34 seconds remaining. Madkin putting that bandage back on his arm because if you have bleeding and it's exposed, you can't play. You've got to go out. Madkin in this first half, 10 of 19 for 119 yards and a one interception. Back to the ground. They've got another scene that's Miller. He doesn't need much and he'll run over the 24. Shepard again makes making the tackle for the Florida Gators. On the ball, 22 and counting, they have the one time out left that they may choose to use before the field goal. What do you do on third down here? You get it, you go to the end zone. I think you go ahead and go for it because you can pick the field goal with the time remaining. From the eye, handoff, up the gut. Once again, Miller is bidding for the first down to the 20 yard line. But now it doesn't do any good. Yeah. See, it does you no good to gain that three yards. The only reason you should do that is if you think that play is going to get you into the end zone. That play takes so much time that now, six seconds remaining, you can't risk throwing into the end zone now, Craig. That will bring on Westerfield, who hit from 19 yards to open this game. Well, one thing, he's got a straight shot at the, uh, the uprights because that football is smack dab in the middle of the field. Well, he missed a, an extra point last week, a rare one that hurt him, but... He is a solid kicker, and from where he is on the field and with the weather conditions today, I would say at this point he's an, an 80 percenter to put a number on it. Desenzo Miller, who has, has a set of great hands. I mean, as we've seen, as a ball carrier, as a, re, as a receiver, is the holder for Mississippi State. And you can bet this will not be a fake. Thirty-seven yard field goal attempt. They'll mark it down at the twenty-seven. Westerfield's kick is up. Eighty percent work. And good. So Westerfield has hit a pair of field goals here. Sixteen ten. Well, our 16-10 our score is halftime. And though that uh, statistically, Florida is just being walloped in a couple of areas. Set to start the third quarter. It's official 43,816 here, and that is a new stadium record. Big Crater is going to come out of the end zone, stacked up, dead on his feet, heads near side at the 15, stumbles up the 20, it takes a hard knock at the 22. And Dean, let's take a look at the halftime numbers, and it won't take you long to see uh, the number that jumps right off the screen. Right there, the rushing yards, minus 27 for Florida, 150, minus 27, that is incredible. Skipped over the first downs, you wouldn't have thought that. In time of possession, this is just the opposite of what you would think with Mississippi State owning a seven-minute advantage in time of possession. First and ten, they pick the pass from the hand straight up the gut. Mississippi State on the roll as Dante Walker brings it to the near side and close to the first down at the 32. Shepard made the tackle. Now, you bring up a great point, Dean, about time of possession because that was a real argument in practice this week down here in Starkville. Little finger pointing? Yeah, I think so. Defense has been on the field for many, many plays throughout the early part of this season, and the offense, well, they think hadn't really done their part. And now, in this half, you look at the play breakdown, offensive plays 45 plays for the Bulldogs, defensive plays only 36. And that's executing a game plan as Walker should have the first down here. That's what they wanted to do, exactly. They, they have done everything that they've wanted, and they stifled Steve Spurrier and his guys. I think the biggest problem for Florida defensively is the loss in the middle. We mentioned a little bit earlier that they have had a couple of players out of the lineup at middle linebacker. Andre Davis is the biggest, though. He was a physical presence for Steve Spurrier. Come on, 
this guy a, was a great player. He hurt his knee, he's out for the year, and, and Carroll is out as well. So you go with a true freshman in this, and they're going right at the gut at Travis Harris, number 27. And his backup is, as, as Coach Furrier has uh, sidecocked that, uh, that hat a little bit, Looks like Spanky and the boys, doesn't he? Well, he's pretty good. He, he's got that sun staying out of his <laughs> eyes. Jackie going the more conventional. Yeah, one. yeah. First down, Bulldogs. You saw the discrepancy there, too, in the first downs. 15 now for Mississippi State. Go on over the top and picked off Johnson. Todd Johnson still on his feet. Cuts back 40, 35, 30 yard line. And watch out. The Florida Gators are setting up the table. Well, they're starting this series, or they did start it the same way they did to start the game. They went deep to try to loosen up Florida. Well, they didn't loosen them up any because Todd Johnson getting the start at free safety is playing the eraser back there. He's making up for any mistake in the back. And he comes down with the interception, and that's a tough, tough start for quarterback Wayne Matkins. Now Grossman's going to come in for this offensive series for Steve Spurrier. First and ten. Now the officials step in to stop play. Craig, that, that is um, two major errors by Madkin. I mean, he's made some nice plays as well. But this sort of typifies his career here. He's been an up-and-down player. And those two big mistakes have hurt his club. Fourth interception thrown on the season by Madkin. Little trickery. Right Going to throw back the other way. Brady at the shoe tops. Down to the 21. You talk about a lot going on in one play. Fumble and recovered now by the Bulldogs. Prather, the pig, is right down there on the bottom of that pile. This play is remarkable. There was so much going on here. It ends up being a double reverse. And this play should have been a touchdown, clearly. Quarterback Grossman wide open up top. All you have to do is throw it. Caldwell can't get it there. I didn't think it was a legal catch, and then a fumble after all of that. Now the fumble recovered by Galladay. Well, I know Caldwell is not a quarterback, but he's wearing a quarterback number at 17. He had him wide open. All he had to do was just throw the football about 30 yards. Steve is exasperated. Turnover is now even at two apiece, and a, an opportunity has just uh, gone by for the Florida Gators. After the interception, they wanted to hit Pater quickly, and not much there up the middle. Hardman led the way with the tackle. You know, we talked to Jackie Sherrill a lot this week, and I thought the most telling thing that he told me was that a goal today was to frustrate the quarterbacks at Florida. He said, if I can frustrate the quarterbacks, I can frustrate that guy, Steve Spurrier. He said, if we frustrate Steve, we've got him right where we want. And we've seen some frustration on the face of Coach Steve Spurrier. Two wide receivers to the near side of the jump up top, no flag. You run to the short side of the field, and that's Walker chopped down by Johnson, who's been very active defensively for the Florida Gators. Leading tackler on this team coming in this afternoon with 27 and had that big 76-yard fumble recovery against Middle Tennessee earlier this season. Only a sophomore. Well, he's a, he's a rising star. I mean, he was a guy that, uh, as a freshman, uh, was a, an all-SEC freshman player and now stepping up uh, even more this year than he did last year. Third down and six, flag fly. The chop. Was that the chop moving? Pork chop Womack? Or was that... That might have been Courtney Lee over there. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. You know, in the, in the NFL, they'll, they'll give you the number, but not, not in college. But I think on the replay here, Dean, you are right on. The chop right there. <laughs> and pork chop Womack. Now, I tell you, his real name is Floyd, but his mom thought he looked like... Pork chop cash. Yeah, this guy. A professional wrestler back home in Cleveland, Mississippi. So I'm glad we cleared it up. That's the original pork That's chop. That's the original pork chop, although I had an insider <laughs> tell me yesterday that his daddy called him that because he used to eat a ton of pork chops. So we've got a controversy in Starkville. Third down, and that not committed back. 
crowd wants the flags. You can hear the boos and the whistles, and so does Matkin. But no flag, and on the cover was Leto Shepard. Well, I would have bet my house that he would have, and yours too if you'd let me mortgage it, <laughs> I would say that he would overthrow that one because he's not, Matkin's not going to take a chance on that one being intercepted. That ball was uncatchable, so there's no penalty. Cole is in to kick. You see that bandage around his right elbow? That's not a bandage. That's actually uh, some tongue depressors that uh, they put on that elbow so he can keep that arm straight and get the kick like that away. Fair catch signal around the 39-yard line. That's a penalty. There it is late, but it's down. We have seen that, Dean, in all three games that you and I have done this year. Well, it, it is called so much. The, the man catching the football has a six-foot circle. It's a halo rule that everyone in the world knows. It seems like everyone knows, but the team's covering. And it's difficult when the man catching the football is moving forward. There was no flag on the play. The player was blocked through the two yards out. No flag in the first down. Did he say he was blocked? You see the fair catch, so they wave off the flag, and the Gators will have it when we come back. Now the Gators are hoping to bite their way back against Mississippi State, down by six with 11.50 left third quarter, and Rex Grossman, that quarterback, now it's Brock Berlin in now. Grossman comes out, they bring Berlin in, and they line him up shotgun. High snap. Blitz is on. We're going to get out of the corner. And then Britton is down for a hard tackle fumble, but I believe he was down. Nope, Connor Stevens made the big hit, number 90. Once again, Berlin has a nightmare occur. Scrambles around, but the guy coming after him is Connor Stevens, who is... 4'5 runner and 255 pounds. You've got to secure the football, though, Brock Berlin. You can't turn it over. And welcome to big-time college football for the true freshman. Rob Knight recovered for Mississippi State. And, Dean, you got to wonder, how do you get any type of consistency at your quarterback spot, not only with the, the guys themselves, but just with the, with the 10 others on the football field? Miller rumbling and big yards. Desenzo Miller had a terrific first half. Well, they're relying on true freshmen now to make plays in the, for the defense. Although that time Ian Scott is out. That time they go to Gus Scott, a strong safety who's seeing some action. Part of the problem in the first half for Florida, though, to answer your question, is Palmer has a twisted ankle and that has hobbled him from. Second down, fell it to. Again, right up the middle. They're attacking the Gators' front, and Miller continues to punish them. We've got news on South Carolina, Alabama, and here's Tim Brando. That's right. Play-by-play -play commentator Charlie Mack Alexander would say it's kiss and hug, the ones you love. It's touchdown, Carolina. Jermel Kelly, he has the last three for Lou Holtz, and it's 20 to 17 in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, and Tim, he was the man who caught the winning touchdown last weekend against Mississippi State. Miller again on the call, bounces off the tackle, and then hit hard down at the 11-yard line. Nothing Florida is doing defensively is right. I mean, they're, they're out of position. They're having to play a lot of young people. They are not tackling, and Mississippi State handed to them, Craig. I mean, they're doing a nice yeah. job, and they, they have some good players. Well, this this young man, I mean, nine carries, 130 yards, and the one touchdown for Desenzo Miller. You know, there was a, some you know some tailback controversy. Yeah. Hey, Dante Walker's a fine runner, but right now Desenzo Miller is uh, owning for the secondary. They get the call up the end, and right back up the gut to the seven-yard line. I could call plays from Mississippi State right now. <laughs> yeah, if you've got Desenzo Miller as your tailback, sure well, you could. And, and maybe if you have the, the pork chop up front. I, Steve Spurrier is, is beside himself. It's one thing to be upset with your quarterbacks. It's another when you can't get your defense to even tackle anyone. Well, people sometimes forget this is a very young Florida defense. 
Secondary yes, is very youthful with three sophomores back there and one freshman. Third down. Again, DeCenzo Miller tackled at the five by Natil. Hobbling off is Huntington. Larry Huntington, number 22. Wide receiver from Atlanta, Georgia, a senior. I still get the, the sense that even with the, the poor play by Florida defensively, that this game's going to be close. And so play the possessions like this, when you have a first and ten on the five, or first and goal on the five, that they're going to be critical. If you get seven, do you get three? This is important. More than twice the amount of first downs. Mississippi State over Florida. Miller punches it up the gut once again to the three-yard line. Marquand Manuel making the stop. Well, I was really impressed just to watch DeCenzo Miller's and his his decision making, and he is very quick. Stop, go, stop, go. Yeah, he's he's very elusive, yet he has some power to it. Packs a 200-pound frame in there. I think what's going to have to happen for Florida defensively is for Gerard Warren, number 61, the terrific tackle, to just put this team on his shoulder. Second down and goal at the three-yard line. Right in there is where he is. From the eye. Miller on his pitch. Makes the turn. And hit down at the one-yard line. And I'm surprised that they decide to go east and west because remember what Jackie Sherrill told us. He said, we can't go east and west with this bunch. Watch the lateral speed here of the Florida defense. Great play by 26 Johnson once again. As he's in the middle of it. And Alexander as well. Well, DeCenzo Miller is going to take a, a rest on that sideline as Dante Walker checks in. This may be a four-point play here. Meaning that if they're held, they would likely kick a field goal. If they score, they get seven. And over touchdown, Dante Walker. Dante Walker chooses to leap a little bit later than Gillespie did earlier in the ball game, and he's able to get over, and Jackie Sherrill likes it. Steve Spurrier saying, let's, let's go offense. Let's just get back together. Mississippi State will talk this over. Wanted to go for two, and they'll burn a timeout here with 8.04 remaining in the third quarter. Well, yeah, they're up by 12, so you go for two, you get it back to what it could have originally been. You know, they had the two-point safety thrown in there, and then the two-point conversion. It'll be a funny way to get to a total of 24 points, but that gets it back to a two-touchdown game. Well, tomorrow here on CBS... The National Football League regional action. Check out the Chargers and the Rams. Kurt Warner just having a superb year. That late game, New England struggling against the Denver Broncos at Mile High Stadium. It all begins with the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Jim Nancy, the guys looking, I uh, just always say this, they look very dapper. Yes, they do. Spiffy's my word. <laughs> Steve Spurrier knows the importance of this two-point play. 22-24, there's a, there's a big difference. Especially when you're playing against a defense like Mississippi State. They don't give them up no. easily. <laughs> Normally in this situation, you wouldn't just do something right up the gut, but you'd almost be tempted to if you're Mississippi State. Griffith lines up in the fullback spot along with DeCenzo Miller, the tailback. One for two. They go to the tight end, Donald Lee. And the lead is 14. This is a well coached football team here. Jackie Sherrill has them prepared. That's two consecutive two point conversions that they've executed. And now they have a 14 point lead. 
Mississippi State leading third-ranked Florida 24-10 with 8.04 remaining third quarter. Mississippi State team with eight plays, 34 yards, and 3.36 as Walker cast it off. And then they went for two and made good on the two-point conversion. You can't give people short fields. I don't care what offense you're talking about. Shepard. Five to see near side at the 30, 35, 40. Shepard chased out of bounds at the 45-yard line. All right, can you name, here's our athletic trivia question, can you name who threw and caught the longest pass play in Florida Gators history? I was doing some research on that, and I think I can. You did research on that again, huh? Had a dream. <laughs> who threw and caught the longest pass play in Florida Gators history. And stick around, we're going to have that answer for you. It may surprise you. I, I got to have a little hint for that. A little bit. No surprise. Grossman still in. My feeling is that you have an ankle problem with Jesse Palmer, and he may not be back. Bulldogs showing blitz. They're coming. Grossman stands up in that pocket. Grossman's wide open. He's got Gaffney. And Bulldog down at the 14-yard line by Morgan. Well, that time they get the matchup that they want. Gaffney one on one. He runs a little corner route and it's wide open. It's a good throw by Grossman, knowing that he could throw it back to the boundary anywhere on the inside. And Gaffney watches that one in and they've dropped several of them, but not recently. Well, it's a nice throw right on the outside end. Pretty good for the freshman who'd been dumped the third team earlier in the week. Huh? How about his numbers? Five of six now for 129 yards. Grossman pedals back, goes in zone. Up and touchdown! That quickly, Gaffney! Two plays, boom! That's Florida football. Corner round on the right side. You come back and you have a corner round on the left side. Grossman throws this one absolutely perfectly. And Steve Spurrier knows that he's got a quarterback who's hot. Jeff Chandler in to try the extra point. He took advantage of a new quarterback. And the kick is up and good. And just like that, the 14-point lead whittled down to seven. 24-17, Mississippi State on top of Florida. Chandler has it teed up, ready to go here in Starkville. Back to receive is Dante Walker and Dick Prather. Prather at the two. Down and stacked up at the 20-yard line. No question, question, Dean, about Jesse Palmer. We keep seeing rotations of quarterbacks, but even though he looks healthy and ready to go, ankle problems, he will not play the remainder of this day. Sprain right ankle. He, he twisted it earlier in the ball game and then did go back in. There next to him is Berlin, who has had a nightmare in a couple of plays. But Jesse Palmer's out, so that puts the onus on Rex Grossman, who has performed well. And again, he was demoted right. to the third team this week. Clubs and Lindsley lined up to the far side. First down, 10 Bulldogs. And a decent clock. And they give it off to Dante Walker, but knocked down by Manuel. You may want to run clock, but you can't play conservative here. No. So much time with seven minutes coming up on this third quarter clock. No, you have to keep doing what you've been doing. And Clark is looking to call the prime game, and this team, for the most part, has executed really well. Matched him with the two killer interceptions. But other than that, they played well. Set up the screen and drops. For an update on South Carolina and Alabama, and the man who knows, it's Tim Brando. Fellas, you were just talking about quarterback controversy and injury with Florida. How about Alabama's Andrew Zell a broken play? Dean, this is his first touchdown of the season. They lead South Carolina by 10. Timmy, I tell you, one of the most dangerous plays in football is just a broken play. <laughs> the busted play. That's, yeah. that's uh, playground stuff. <laughs> well, he made the most of it there in the over-under on his touchdown for this time of the year would have probably been about seven. And as Tim said, he's made one. 
Third down. And knocked down. Incomplete. So a quick offensive set here for Mississippi State. Oquindo Johnson uh, went up and knocked that ball out of the sky. And it's fourth down. Mississippi State. You know, Florida is an amazing team. They go down to Tennessee and they don't play well. And yet, they're able to hold Tennessee to all those field goals and come out and win the game. And out here today, they had played poorly defensively. They've had three quarterbacks in the game, and you think that, you know, there's no way. And you look up there, they're right in the middle of this ball game, about to get the ball back. Cole inside his 10-yard line, kicking to Shepard. Oh, it's a boot. All the way back to the 24-yard line, and good special teams coverage at the 31. Julius Griffith. Well, next Saturday on CBS, Washington, D.C.'s new police commissioner is handpicking the best crime-fighting team in the nation. Now the people have someone on their side. Emmy winner Craig T. Nelson stars in the district premiering next Saturday on CBS. You know, I really respect what Rex Grossman is showing today because when you get demoted as a quarterback, it's easy to go sit in the corner and mope. And what he has clearly done is taken his playbook home. He has studied. He's prepared to play. And he's only two snaps away from being in this opportunity with Palmer out and Berlin not getting there. 142 yards, 6 of 7. There are a lot of movement by Mississippi State's front. The handoff, and now a flag comes down. And there was so much movement that the play clock Went down to, to double zero. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Dean, let's take a look at uh, today's heroes around the country. Damian Anderson, Redmond, and how about Major Applewhite, 291, three touchdowns, and they run away from Oak State. Hey, he, he's the backup quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> There's controversy. <laughs> oh, oh, is there you know, they went with Chris Sims again today, and Chris Sims didn't get it done early, and Major Applewhite comes in. All he is is the co-offensive player of the year in the Big 12, and he's ready to go, taking on Oklahoma next week. First down, 15. Over the middle, great call to the tight end, Walker. And it's going to take one, two, three, four Bulldogs to bring down the 240-pounder led by Morgan and uh, and Clinton. But a terrific call by Spurrier. Yeah, he hits a seam route right here. And I'm telling you, number eight is finding his rhythm right over the top of the linebackers in between the safeties and the linebackers. Rex Grossman showing he can throw it deep, throw it short, throw it hard, and lob it into a void spot. Clock running, coming up on six minutes left in the third quarter. Walker, that was a 23-yard reception. First down at midfield. Grossman, three-step drop, throws and connects right on the money. I mean, he put that one right on the number of 17 for Rache Caldwell. Hey, this guy feels like he's bulletproof right now. I mean, this is a freshman. Well, then you brought this up, though. When they're making the different rotations with the three quarterbacks in the first half, you all talked, you were talking about rhythm. He's got it. Yeah, he does have it, and he has it because this guy is hurt. This guy has taken himself out because he has had a couple of bad plays, and Steve Spurrier says, Rex, you're hot. You are the man. So he's feeling good. First and 10 at the 40-yard line of Mississippi State. Gators, seven, uh, third ranked in the country, down seven. From the shotgun. Grossman over the middle, connects with Graham to the 35-yard line, a pickup of five. Prather made the tackle. There's Steve Spurrier. You know, one thing about him, a lot of people love him, a lot of people hate him, but one thing you've got to understand, that he tells you what's on his mind, and if he doesn't tell you, the expressions do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They average 302 yards a game passing, and they're just just a few yards away from hitting that mark once again. His players love playing for him, and his coaches love coaching for him. Graham on the pitch. Stacked up. He's going to be short of the first down uh, around the 30-yard line. Needed to break the 30 down near the 29. Willie Blade made the tackle. And this is where Spurrier's dangerous because you don't know what in the world he's going to do. Joe Lee Dunn told us the other day, is, he said, you have no idea how big a playbook this guy has. So will he hand it off? 
be conservative, or will they play action and go deep? You've got to be cut ready for both. Daphne and Kite in for Florida. Gillespie gets the call, spins down to the 22-yard line. First down, Gators and Smoot made the tackle from his right corner spot. Gators made some adjustments at halftime, and the team playing on its heels right now. The defense playing on its heels. Guys out there in the maroon. On first down, Grossman throws to the near side. Touchdown! When you're hot, you are hot. And what Steve Spurrier doing is doing is going for the jugular, and he's doing it with his favorite receiver, Gaffney, against a guy who's subbing for an injured starter. And three times in a row, Gaffney has gotten the corner route open, and Grossman has delivered the ball there. Spurrier says, we're going after number six, Sean Birdsaw. Now, these numbers are so impressive. 10 of 11, 204 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. Unsportsmanlike conduct after the touchdown, so they're going to march this ball back outside, uh, inside the 20. Hey, Craig, it's the day of the backup quarterback. Sure is. You know, Major Apple, yeah. he didn't start. Rex Grossman, he not only didn't start, he didn't go in second. <laughs> hey, this will be a 35-yard extra point. Kick is up. And... Oh, my! The extra point from 35. A one-point game. Well, let's look at our Exxon scoring recap. And, Dean, look at this. Mississippi State with the first three scores and go up 13-0. Florida battles back, and now Gaffney with back-to-back -back touchdowns, but it's 24-23 because of an unsportsmanlike penalty. They march it back to the 35-yard line, and the extra point is wide. Well, Steve Spurrier is upset at his guys for the penalty and for the missed field goal over extra point, but he was really agitated at the official, he goes out to chat with him. And that's how we got here, and there's plenty more to go. Oh, what a ball game. What a ball game. It's been a game where Mississippi State's played well defensively, yet you look up and you got a 24-23 game. Chandler to kick. Craver, six and E. And so Mississippi State will start at the 20. I say they played well. They played well until this third quarter when Spurrier's been dialing them up after the adjustments. Well, can you name and who threw and caught the longest pass in Florida Gators history? That's today's AFLAC trivia question, and we have the answer. Chris Collingsworth to Derek Gaffney, and this one went 99 yards versus Rice back in 1977. Chris Collingsworth. Be another Gaffney, and uh, that videotape or that film would be very old. Good hit. <laughs> Justin Griffith. Hey, you know, you asked, you shall receive. We're going we're to take you back in, in time just a little bit. Houston, Texas, and here is Collinsworth on that rollout, and he throws a deep ball. Gaffney reaches out, breaks the tackle at midfield, and then it's just a foot race. Hey, it, it, we're not that old. I mean, it, you see, you know Chris Collinsworth. That's when we play, right? Look at the, look at the tape. Or the, uh, you can't say tape. It's a, it's a film. It's a film. Yeah, you had to wait for it to be developed before coaches could then set all day uh, Sunday in their in their office with that old clicker. Yeah. Click, click. Second down and eight for Mississippi State. One point game here in Starkville. Napkin rolls out, throws, hooks up Dante Walker, breaks the tackle, get on his feet, and rumbles past the 30 down to the 33 yard line. First down, Bulldogs. And it's the clock will run as soon as they set the chains. Very nice job of being able to get your back in a north-south position, yet being able to throw it to it. Anytime Mississippi State has had that ball going vertical, running the football right at Florida, they have been successful. Walker chopped down. He'll lose a couple back to the 31, and... Tron LeFevre made the tackle. Tron LeFevre, one of the many changes defensively today for Florida, as Manuel was as well. Manuel 
was able to get a start because Todd Johnson moved over for Dixon at free safety. Manuel goes in at strong, but you know, LeFevre moves from end to tackle so that Clint Mitchell can play. So lots of new players. Second down at 12, backs are split. Matkin throws. Walker, back to tackle. Walker lowers down those pads and takes a shot on second effort and a fine play to the 40-yard line. The Teal finally made the stop. And it will be third down and short. Well, you know the problem here is yet another missed tackle. Florida has had a ton of those this afternoon. That's Fleming, true freshman. Under a minute and a half left third quarter, third down and two. Three, two wide receivers. Alex Brown finally in the ball game. The pitch to Dante Walker. First down past the 45 to the 47. Alex Brown, you just mentioned his number, number 13. An All-American a year ago making the tackle. Well, he was in the vicinity. I want you to watch how Alex Brown was manhandled by Lee. It was a, a wonderful push offensively by the people up front, and you see Alex Brown right there on the ground. Under a minute left, third quarter. First and ten, Mississippi State. This is I mean, this is just textbook football. This is just you against me. And they hand it off to Walker again, and he just following the big bodies of Watson and his, his center, Michael Fair. Mark Juan Manuel making the tackle. Well, Jackie Sherrill felt coming into this game that he had a couple of matchups that he had to win today or at least neutralize to have a chance to be successful. And Jackie said Watson, number 66, against Warren. The outstanding tackle was key and Fairchild going against Brown. The only problem is Fairchild would have to be on the Florida sideline to block Brown most of the afternoon. Fresh legs are in to Sinzo Miller. Checks in. Griffin. Justin Griffith makes... To the 40 makes it to the 45 as Warren made the tackle. Final seconds ticking away down here in the third. Well, that is the end of the third quarter. A wild game here in Starkville. Mississippi State 24, 4 to 23. We'll return to Scott Field right after this message and a word from your local station. Well, as we start the fourth quarter, I guess you can't say it's the dog days of summer. Mississippi State and the Bulldogs up on number three ranked Florida by one. You know, they started out with a bulldog getting in the way of Mississippi State coming out of the tunnel, and they fell down, but it's not been that kind of day for them, has it? From the eye, third down and short. <laughs> well, that play has been there all afternoon, as if it's not Walker, it's DeCenzo Miller. They run right, they run left, they run up the gut. And a first down. Well, Florida cannot figure out how to stop it. And it's not a complicated play. What that tells you is that they're, they just don't have the troops. They're playing a lot of young people, a lot of new people at positions, and they just aren't getting it done. First and 10, Mississippi State at the Florida 40-yard line. Once again, hand back to Sam Hunt. At the 30, 25, 20 yard line. He looks out 20 yards, and it's tackled by Johnson and Manuel. And this is a perfect example of what is happening here. Watch the linebacker get caught there. That is Matt Ferrier, not even close to making that play. And it's in the secondary before you know it. They're burying people up front. Ferrier a little bit lost and moved the chains again for the home team. And even though, Dean, this is late, in the ball game as we start the fourth quarter. Desenzo still very fresh because he's traded time today with Dante Walker. Once again to the 15, a pickup of five. How about 16 carries for 169 yards? Well, I thought Sparky Woods had a good comment when he was talking to the offensive coordinator for Mississippi State. He said, you know, I wish I had a Herschel Walker, one of the guys that we could just say, you're the man. But unless you have a clear leader, then it's best to put two different guys in there. Keep them fresh. Keep them healthy and give the defense a different look. Pick up a four, second down and six. Wayne Matt 
Luck and has gone the distance at quarterback. This time the Gators plug, plug the middle. And Dean, here's the difference in this game right now. That last touchdown thrown by the Florida Gators, they get penalized 15 yards for unsportsmanlike conduct. And the extra point has to be kicked from the 35-yard line, a 35-yard attempt. And it falls just a bit. But what a game we have here, Craig. Look at the rushing differential. And then the passing goes back to Florida. But those numbers are just remarkable, as this game is. Parker and Huntington, the two wide receivers. Mackin sets up and throws. Touchdown! Huntington! Now this is a big-time throw from Wayne Matkin. He's going to throw interceptions. He's going to make some dumb plays, but he also has the rifle arm to throw a deep out to the far side of the field and get that ball there quickly enough to beat the cornerback. And Steve Spurrier says that's pretty good. Westerfield will try the extra point. Kick is away and good. Boy, a bullet. Matkin to Huntington, 31-23, Mississippi State. Larry Huntington, the senior from Atlanta, Georgia, celebrating on the sideline. His first touchdown reception of the season. 12, 12 plays, 80 yards. It took six minutes and some change off the clock. But what's impressive, 80 yards. Well, in Mississippi State, let's not get them confused with Kentucky. Kentucky can score on anyone. Now, they may score 31 and get beat by 20 points. I believe that's what happened last week, kind of in Gainesville. No return by Lito Shepard. And Craig Bullerjack with Dean Blevins here in Starkville, Mississippi. And Dean, uh, typical SEC football, Mississippi State, ranked a week ago, knocked off by South Carolina, Lou Holtz. Gators come in ranked number three. It's just been up and down the field and a lot of quarterback changes for Steve Spurrier. For us, it's great. I mean, I don't know about the, the defensive people at Florida right now. John Hoke, the coordinator, who is under fire, and then Steve Spurrier, who's having to go out there and outscore what his defense can't hold. But uh, it's a great game from up here. Well, Grossman has been very effective with a pair of touchdown throws to Gaffney. It's just been up and down here in the second half. Grossman going back once more over the middle. A little bit strong on the arm and incomplete one at Caldwell. 17 and ends up on his backside. Fred Smoot was the cover man. And next week, college football doubleheader here on CBS. Number two, Florida State taking on the 10th ranked Miami Hurricanes. And depending on what happens in this crazy SEC, a game to be determined, and that's next Saturday. All starts at high noon Eastern here on CBS. All I know are the options are good when you're in the Southeastern uh -huh. Conference. There is not a bad weekend. Gillespie weaving his way through the Bulldogs secondary and picks up nine yards to the 29. Take Prather made the tackle. Well, for those just tuning in, what you've seen is a track meet for Mississippi State against a a sieve of a, an interior defense for Florida, but at the same time in the second half, the Florida offense made great adjustments at halftime, and they've taken advantage of Mississippi State here. Back after the Gillespie, wants to try to sweep the toss sweep first down. to pick up two the hard way to the 31-yard line. That was a good look at Jackie Sherrill. He always gives you that calm demeanor, but on the other side of the football field, you have Steve Spurrier, who is just a highlight reel uh, every time you every time you tune in. <laughs> yeah, very quotable. Both of these coaches have uh, charisma in their own way, controversial in their own way, and have won a lot of games in their own way. Under 12 minutes left from the shotgun. Grossman throws near side. And Gaffney makes the catch for a Michael Vick update. Back to Tim Brando at our New York studios. Timmy.
Craig, we told you on College Football Today this would be the breakout performance for the Heisman Trophy for Michael Vick. Now, if you're Joe Lee Dunn, the Mississippi State defensive coordinator, and you bring the house, this is what can happen when Vick sets sail 82 yards, one man to beat. Can he get a shield? Uh, a little deke? A little do ya. Touchdown, Virginia Tech, 48-27. Screen the sprinter. He has another gear. The sixth, it's the sixth gear. Nice throw right on the hands of Gaffney. And right now it's Gaffney and Grossman. And that's the Spurrier combination that has uh, bent, at least found a seam in this Mississippi State defense. They've had a couple of touchdowns last time they've uh, been on the field. And right now it's the same combination. Yeah, if you're tuning in and just wondering what's going on with this offense and where's Jesse Palmer, well, he has a sprained ankle. They went with the new second team, Brock Berlin, didn't get it done. And Rex Grossman looks like a fifth-year senior. First down at midfield. Motion man is Ernest Grand. Grossman shot him down at the 20. David Jorgensen, 54, the center, has had several balls that were pretty high. And in this case, Grossman wants to make a play. He should have gotten on it there. It would have saved him eight yards. Dean, you've been in this position yeah. at Oklahoma. What goes through your mind right now? Well, it, it, you better get on it. I mean, your school to get on that football, you'd love to be able to pick it up and make something big happen, but the worst thing that can happen is to not get it. Don't go back to all those fumbles. Uh -huh. Come on. Second down. Oh, unbelievable. Twilight zone. Here is Starkville. And Hoffman hits the deck at the three. I don't believe it. doubt that Steve Spurrier has ever been more upset. Jorgensen high again. And this time, instead of trying to do something with it, Grossman gets on it. And talk about a long yardage situation. I don't know if I've ever seen this. Third and 57. Well, you almost have to come up under center because you're afraid of giving up more points. And don't forget, Jesse Palmer in the first quarter was sacked in this game. Takes and he took the safety. The safety. Yeah. Well, with the way things are going, that's probably the smart thing. Just get out of the jam. Puts it to 33, 23, gets it to 10. So now you're two touchdowns away or a touchdown, two-point play, and a field goal away from victory. And once again, Mississippi State's defense scores. They've got two safeties today. Wow. Now some push-ups here in Starkville. Plenty. 33-23. Mississippi State. Florida unbeaten as they came into Starkville this afternoon with wins over Ball State, Middle Tennessee, at Tennessee, Kentucky. Wink is back home against LSU and two fine coaches and Steve Spurrier and Jackie Sherrill. One of the smaller stadiums you'll get into, especially in the Southeastern Conference on a Saturday, but you talk about electric. This place is right now. And they have been waiting to get Florida here, get a program of prominence, get a program that is a top three team. In fact, they haven't beaten a top three team here in Starkville since 1980. So they have something to gun for. Now you see that crane right behind the Mississippi State cheerleader. There is a big expansion underway here of around 9,000 seats, $20 million. There may be some more as the flag comes out, some more donations after this game. <laughs> There is a flag. A referee today is Steve Shaw. During the return, holding on the receiving team, 10 yard penalty from the end of the run, it'll be first down. 
Well, our Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete of the Game is Mississippi State University kicker Scott Westerfield. Rigid Tools' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Mississippi State University General Scholarship Fund. How about 3.94? He's a dandy. There are lots of great kickers on the field today. Jackie Sherrill does a great job in that area. And many of his kickers have gone on to play in the NFL. Ten penalties now against the Bulldogs for 85 yards. Back and throws near sign. Hooks up Justin Jenkins. And Jenkins not able to get out of bounds. The clock will run at the 37-yard line. Benny Alexander made the tackle. Now, this is a football team. Matkins Club here averages only 60 plays a game. 60 offensive plays. They had 45 in the first half. They've had the ball all the second half. That's what their goal was today was to rest its defense, and they have a tired Gator defense out there now. Parker and Jenkins, two wide outs to the near side. And the ground, here comes Dante Walker at the 40, 35, 40! Walker! yard burst by Dante Walker. Dante Walker, the highly recruited running back with all the tools, and at 225, he can motor. And once again, nothing new for three hours. It has been Mississippi State up the gut on the Florida defense. This time the keeper, touchdown, Matkins. But a flag is down. Substitution is back on the defense. Early is the flag. Touchdown. Madkin carries in his second. Touchdown by way of the ground and the extra point to come. Westerfield in the kick. I don't know what's more surprising. 39 points for this offense at Mississippi State or giving up 39 for Florida. Extra point is good. And can you believe it here in Starkville? Welcome back to Starkville, Mississippi. 40 to 23, a terrific afternoon in that Mississippi State backfield. Dante Walker, DeCenzo Miller, the one-two punch. Eight sixteen left here in the fourth quarter. Westerfield will kick for the Bulldogs and back to receive is Shepard. Shepard and the Wetliff. Shepard at the goal line. Shepard up the middle at the 20. Shepard at the 25. A 25-yard return. Well, here's our CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Mississippi State, 303 rushing yards. The Gators, minus 62 for complete college football coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. Miller with 167. Walker with 128. Both with touchdowns. But who would have, uh, you look at that, that's, that's a shocker. Minus 62 yards on the ground. That's beyond a shocker. That's, uh, that's almost impossible. Roseman back to the air, throws a little pitch and catch to the far sideline. Hogabrook now made the catch, tackled by Clinton. Now, now, Mississippi State knows better than to relax here because if there's any team in the country, I'd say there's two teams that come back. Yep, Florida State and Florida would be the two teams that point to. This team can come back and score points very quickly. Well, if you've been with us from the start, you saw maybe Mississippi State kind of get back on the heels a bit, and Grossman hit him for two touchdowns to Gaffney. Grossman able to jump out of trouble, races to the sideline, smart. Stops the clock at the 36-yard line. 7.30 left in the fourth. Tonight on CBS, Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington star in a chilling conspiracy based on the unforgettable John Grisham thriller a dandy of a movie. The Pelican Brief, don't miss it tonight, right here on CBS. Now, that is a combination. Yep. And, and, and Grisham, Grisham is a, a Mississippi guy, I think, isn't he? I think he's from uh, Oxford. Oxford? Yeah. yeah. 
great, great rider. First and ten. Grossman pedals and throws. Right on him. Oh, what a knock in the chops by Josh Morgan. Whew. You know, his dad coached him in high school, and and and, and Papa, if you're watching, you, you, you taught him well. That's right, over in Vicksburg, Mississippi, and you dream of situations like this. Yeah. Morgan gets a free pop. Receivers will be aware the next time the ball is thrown over the middle. Second down at 10. Four wide receivers. Going deep. Incomplete. And a new quarterback threw that football. Grossman checked out and brought Berlin. Uh, the freshman from Shreveport. Well, and there have been a lot of new players out there today, and because of the bad snaps on that previous series, Tommy Hilliard is now the center, and I noticed that one, that snap was low and yep. fast. <laughs> Third down and 10. Florida down by 17. Berlin sets up those feet and throws. Gets his man, breaking away, number 19. Berlin has That's been in Jackson. some yeah he's been in some tough situations. Watch the the way that Berlin drops back and holds this ball up by his ear and the quick release. Boom. That is really a nice play after recovering uh, a difficult snap on a third down. Hangs in the pocket, Craig, and rifles that ball in there. You know, right now Steve Spurrier is just looking for players who want to play because uh, Jackson is a fifth string wideout and a freshman. Freshman to the other. Incomplete. Taylor Jacobs, the intended receiver. Update on Boston College, Virginia Tech. Back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. Craig and Dean, Michael Vick turned it over for the second time, and that led to William Green's second touchdown run of the day. This one from 12 yards out. Boston College does close the gap to 14 at Chestnut Hill. Back to Craig and Dean. Thank you, Timmy. We can never. Dean, as you mentioned, let up. Opportunities come and teams will bite you. Yes, they will. Wilson from the shot down, down, and the ball is loose, but they're going to spot it. They're going to spot the ball at the 41. And Florida is lucky there. Three things could have happened. It could have been a grounding and a penalty. It could have been a fumble, or it could have been as they called it. Berlin sees the pressure in high school. He can escape here, not. You've got to get rid of it. Boy, that is close as our man Pig Fraser comes in and makes the play. Boy, he's a big man at 6'3, 195, 21, only a junior. Well, he is he is perfect for this Jolie Dunn defense. At that dog safety spot. Deep ball sideline. Incomplete. And Jackson, Matt Jackson, the intended receiver. And the other dog safety, Eugene Clinton, was down there on the cover. Number 14 for Mississippi State. Well, interestingly, Florida that time goes for the jugular. They do. They decide to not try to pick up any of that 20 yards and go for it on fourth down. They may end up having to go for it on fourth down, but now it would be fourth and 20. Well, a timeout. We'll be back after this to Starkville. 608 left. You have to, you have to, <laughs> to grin about Spurrier. Throw it to Fort Chop. Grossman back in at quarterback. Fourth down. They're going for it. Heavy pressure and, hit and knocked down from behind. And in that backfield all afternoon has been Connor Stevens. He's a, a junior out of Ackerman, Mississippi. And how apropos that Connor Stevens may be the one that douses any Florida hopes because he typifies what Joe Lee Dunn has defensively. Look at him just overpower Pearson. And before Grossman knows it, he's on the ground. Stevens is a guy who, he's a linebacker. 6'4", 252, runs a 4'5", 40, bench presses 400 pounds. On the NFL scouts, look at him, they just drool. Reverse, coming near side.
Justin Jenkins, the ball carrier. We checked the SEC today. That is a final. Alabama kind of cools off. Lou Holtz in South Carolina by 10. Auburn big over Vandy. Georgia over Arkansas on the road. And tonight you got Kentucky Ole Miss and 11th ranked Tennessee taking on LSU. Arkansas and Houston not missing those running backs. I mean, Georgia, when they get going, they're really good. And Gary Gibbs is doing a great job as a defensive coordinator now. But Arkansas losing Cobb, that's big. Second down and three, under six minutes left here. And back here the fourth quarter, they give it to the money man. Dante Walker breaks the tackle at the twice. Stiff arms his way to the 17-yard line. He was taken on Todd Johnson. But Dante Walker, along with Desenzo Miller in that bulldog backfield, basically, Dean, there's no other way to put it. They just had their way running through holes, and they're big holes. Well, I'm not believing what I'm seeing here this afternoon because you think of Florida defenses being active, being physical, being good tacklers, and they are out there playing anyone they can get their hands on. Steve Spurrier's running up and down the sideline, coaching defense. 149 yards for Dante Walker. He'll line up in that tailback spot first down at the 17-yard line. He tries one way, he runs the other. Walker out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And he's look, you see that? He looked at Jackie Sherrill and put his hand up on his chest, and I'm done. And here comes Desenzo Miller. Well, now some of it is Florida's not playing well, but here is one of the reasons they're successful. Watch the lead blocking out front here. Boom, boom. Two men down by one blocker, and it was sealed off on the inside. This is a, a very efficient Mississippi State offensive team right now. Now, Kenny Williamson, the fullback, is the man <laughs> He's a monster who, who, who really has led Walker and Miller all afternoon. This is a, Miller leans up past the five to the four. First down, Mississippi State. There last week. Points allowed 31 against Kentucky today, 36. And look at the yards. 504 and 511. And John Hope, we talked to him on the phone. He's hurt a lot in Gainesville. Yes, he has. And uh, Bruce Furrier says John Hope's not the only one responsible for the defense. But he is as well. But Something is amiss. Big time. Well, favor made the tackle. Let me ask you this, Dean. As you look at Spurrier on a knee, Gators are young. And I know a coach of Spurrier's stature will never say that. That should not be the issue. But 56 of the 85 scholarships, they're freshmen or sophomore. Break it down. That's 66%. Yeah. Well, I, I think the other thing is... is Alex Brown has been a non-factor, and in the middle, they are down to starting a true freshman at middle line. Watkins, bootleg, reaches out, touchdown! Well, anything you dial up is working for Mississippi State. Wayne Matkins fools a lot of people and puts it on his hip and runs the bootleg across the goal line and he is fast. Matkin is not Matkin is not nifty, but Wayne Matkin is fast. 6'4, 220 pounder. He's got he told us he has problems keeping weight on. He's got he says I got a, a very fast metabolism. Yeah, he's got my girlfriend told me I'm skinny, so I went from 205 to 227. He takes orders well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Westerfield, the tough snap, but a good hold, and it's up and good. 47-23. Jackie Sherrill puts the arms up. 429 left. Standing room only, you bet, here in Starkville, Mississippi. Bulldogs on top of the third-ranked Gators, 47-23. Six plays, 45 yards, and the five-yard bootleg by Matkin. It took a minute 32 off the clock. Mississippi State, a team not known for its offense, has accomplished every offensive goal that it had coming into this day. They, they said they wanted to get into a physical game, not a finesse game, with Steve Spurrier. 
on Michael Marlin. Will kick away from Mississippi State from his 35. Shepard back to receive along with Ratliff. They've angled him pretty most, uh, most all day to Shepard, three yards deep. Leto Shepard at the 20. Shepard breaks it at the 30. And hammered down at the 37-yard line. Well, today's player of the game presented by Solomon Smith Barney. Tough call. DeCinzo Miller from Mississippi State. 172 yards. Look at that average per rush. Watch in December when Solomon Smith Barney presents the CBS Sports College Football Player of the Year, uh, Year Award show here on CBS. 9.1 yards. Yeah. Hard to believe 9.1 against any defense in the Southeastern Conference. I think that he would tell you that you could also hand that out to Porkchop, Womack, and Lee, and Fair, and Watson, and Fairchild, and the guys up front just as easily. Grossman back to quarterback. Check that for Lynn. And they'll throw near side to Kite and hit immediately. Well, guys, tomorrow, check out the NFL Today tomorrow, presented by Southwest Airlines. <laughs> that's tomorrow at noon Eastern. And then stay with them at halftime, the NASDAQ, NASDAQ.com halftime report. Jim Nance, Craig James, the two coaches, Glanville and Coach Ditka, will be there. Gillespie on the screen. You know, Joe Lee Dunn, the uh, coordinator at Mississippi State, is known as just the ultimate attack personality and attack coach. This is as close to a prevent defense as you'll ever see Jolie Dunn in. He's going to gladly give up the things underneath to the Gators and not let them get deep. Now Jolie Dunn last year, their defense here at Mississippi State led the nation with 222.5 yards. They were tremendous against the run. Same situation here in the year 2000. And then let's uh, update the SC, the SEC East. The Gators going to fall their first game of the season. South Carolina falls today. They're two and one. Georgia even up at one and one. Kentucky, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt still looking for for a win. Second down and five. Berlin on the slant. A pickup of nine. Hagen. Making the stop, and you look at the West in the SEC. Well, and what you see here is that Alabama's back in this race. So they are a team. I say in this race, they're back alive. Arkansas, a little bit vulnerable, and they fall to a convincing win to, to Georgia right back in the middle of the thing. And the Mississippi State, they may be on the bottom right here, but this well, is a team that could flip flop to the top overnight. This is a huge, huge win for this program. Berlin throws. Caldwell makes the catch. Works his way to midfield and wrapped up at the 29. Spurrier still coaching despite being down 47-23. And Dean, uh, the common thread we've been trying to bring through the entire game is just hey, Mississippi State needed to be on the field more offensively. And they've 82. been there. 82. They said give us 75 plays on offense. We'll be very happy. 82. They averaged 60 offensive snaps a game. They are at 82. The defense has been out there a bunch this season, but not today. Touchdown, Berlin. Threw it downfield and right on the money to Jackson. You know, I love Spurrier. Despite the margin, he continues to work the offense. Sure he does. I mean, it, maybe the most uh, competitive guy on this planet, and Berlin rifles that's a great throw. Yeah, he rifles it in between coverage and the first of what could be many touchdowns as a Florida Gator. Well, this young guy knows all about touchdowns. I mentioned his high school career. I mean, anyone nearly 14,000 yards, but how about 145 touchdowns for Brock Berlin? 217 left. We'll be back. Mississippi State 47 and the Florida Gators. 29 extra points still to come. Jackie Sherrill facing the sideline. The sunglasses are off. Lights are on here in Starkville. Jackie Sherrill's had some championships. He's he won a lot of games at Texas A&M and won a lot of games at Pittsburgh. And you know, last year they had a terrific year here. But this one will be one that Jackie Sherrill will savor forever. 
you know, these two coaches, they, uh, they've been on the golf course a few times together. Yeah, what's he say? He said, Steve's, uh, Steve's a good guy. He's a friend of mine, but <laughs> you don't talk to him on a golf course. No way. You know, I played with Coach Curry once in uh, Oak Tree in Oakland City. Oh, oh, they had the slant. It was in and out of the hands of Gaffney, but hold on. Flags are down. One thing that really impressed me about Steve Spurrier is he had a terrible day golfing that day, but he was a gentleman. It may surprise people, but he was a total gentleman. And, uh, you know, you get to know someone on the yep. golf course. Substitution infraction against the offense. Penalty is declined. The point is no good. So the two-point conversion fails, and we'll be back. Now, well, Mississippi State in control over number three ranked Florida. And, Dean, uh, this may take a while, but game summary, 47-29. You see the first down, nearly even as uh, the Gators have come on stronger here with some pass plays in the in the second half at the rushing yards. Yeah, the, the, there's some numbers there that you are a little bit hard to believe, but that one, what are we looking at there? A 410-yard disparity in rushing. Mm -hmm. Minus 78 for the Gators, suffering several sacks but they really could not slow down a rushing attack led by Miller from Mississippi State Miller and Dante Walker what a one-two punch for Cheryl to have one guy who can run you saw a couple of times both players raising their hands saying you know what I'm spent onside kick and it's covered up nicely by Mississippi State Clarence Parker uh, on the special teams Sunday on the season premiere of 60 Minutes, how does Firestone answer the charge that their tires are not safe? That's what Ed Bradley wanted to know and reports it Sunday. Should be very interesting right here on CBS, 60 Minutes. Some team meetings don't amount to anything. Some work. Fred Smoot called a team meeting on Wednesday night because he felt the team wasn't really together. And the offense and defense were back and forth a little bit, you know, tailback issue and that issue, but I think they're on the same page now. It worked. And off goes to Griffith, fumble down on the ground, and the Gators look to have uh, put that one in their midst. They do. It was a new quarterback, Kevin Fant, who just checked in, a redshirt freshman. He handed off to Griffith and coughed it up. Lito Shepard gathered it in for the Florida Gators. Well, you've got to secure it, and that one shouldn't have been fumble. You're as a defense, you're trying to strip it out, and an offensive, the man with the football's got to know that. It won't matter in this game, but it might in another game. Two old five left. Berlin, the quarterback, sets up and dumps it over the middle, tips and incomplete. Dorsett Davis up and out on CBS. Julia Roberts, Denzel Washington star in a chilling conspiracy. Pelican Brief, written by John Grisham. Don't miss it tonight on CBS. You mentioned Dorsett Davis, 99, a big hoss in there from Mississippi State. He told us a couple of days ago, or I guess it was yesterday, that no one can, uh, no one can stop me, and they have it today. All 6'6", 314 pounds of it. Berlin sets up and throws. Complete Gillespie at midfield. Cuts it to the outside. Trying to get out of bounds, but they will uh, continue to run the clock. First down, Gators. Eugene Clinton making the stop. Well, Florida needs to regroup. They have LSU at home and Auburn, and then they have another chance to, to get it together before a, a Jim Donning club that's got all over Arkansas plays them and this is it's a schedule that yeah they can win out into Florida State but they won't beat anybody really until they learn to play a little bit better defense. Berlin throws Gillespie again. Center of the field taken down at the 35. And an update on the Pac-10. Here's Tim Brando. Ah uh, the quack attack Craig Bowler Jack 18 straight at home for the Ducks. Allen Amundsen goes in from five yards up. Another top 10 team Washington falls seven AP preseason top 10 teams have lost ball batted up incomplete I tell you, Oregon is turning many many heads in the Pac-10 they have they're also turning heads at conference after a, uh, a very tough season a year ago well Bellotti is one of the top coaches in the country and although Rick Neuheisel has done a great job at Washington and 
and they're a talented team, it's tough to go into Oregon and come out of there with a win. You've been out in that part of the country yeah. a lot. That's, uh, that's a tough place to go win. They're down in one. The Gators have pretty much exclusively gone with the shotgun all afternoon. Little pump and the fire across the middle. Nice catch. Caldwell, first down around the 16 yard line. So that's the one play that the Gators have been successful on, on that just that hot slant this afternoon. And Caldwell has uh, brought down a mini. Well, and this late in the game, it's going to be there because of the style of the defense. You know, the, the Gators can look back and say that Jesse Palmer's injury really hurt him. And sure, when you lose a quarterback of his ability, it hurts that Jesse doesn't play defense. Gillespie, the long back. Berlin throws, hooks up with Gillespie. Better step and then popped and dropped to the 20. That was number 98 uh, with the hit for Mississippi State, Mario Hagan. I have a feeling that although they're trying to keep people off, this field will be covered up in about 25 seconds. Uh, Jackie Sherrill, nice shot there, getting the handshake, giving out the handshake to his quarterback, Wayne Mackin. Incomplete, going for the end zone. He wanted Caldwell. 13 ticks left on the clock. This will be the 13th consecutive win for Mississippi State here on their home field. Scott Field. And the crowd here came to see number three ranked Florida and Mississippi State. This game will put the Bulldogs back in the top 25. As it should. Third down. Again on that slant. The catch is made and down goes Kite. You see Spurrier wants him to down it. They're going to set the chain so the clock is still uh, stopped with nine seconds left. And they'll wind it up here as soon as they, uh, they set the chains on the far side. Well, Florida could be having the distinction of two consecutive weeks as the fans boo the downing of the ball ordered by Steve Spurrier on Two consecutive weekends, they could end the game throwing a touchdown. They did it against Kentucky. We look at the remaining schedule, Dean. Uh, Auburn, 19th rank, comes in unbeaten next week. Then they have that open date. LSU, you're looking down at uh, Alabama in November, along with Arkansas, Houston, Nutt, and the guys, and then at Mississippi on the 23rd. Well, today's win will do a lot for this bunch, and they've been fortunate in that they have not had any injuries. I mean, the guys who started in the first game have been here the entire way. Today, they do lose Kendall Robertson. Oh, there it is. On a bar soap, Coach. Jackie Sherrill gets the bucket. Steve Spurrier, though. He'll go right back to the drawing board and look at this film and dissect it and try to find answers because there will be many asks. Jackie Sherrill, on the other hand, will, will enjoy this one, and uh, his players appreciate him. You, you hear about players' coaches all the time, and he's one of them. Four wide receivers set on his back foot. Berlin, touchdown! Oh, you got to like the way they keep coming. Hargabrook on the back end. No chance for the extra point. Look at this scene in Starkville. <laughs> yeah, no need for the, the attempt at two. I don't know if Spurrier will get a chance to, to shake hands with, with Jackie Sherrill or not. Yeah, that was a quick one, though, Craig. <laughs> it's in and out. Third-ranked Florida falling on the road at Mississippi State. And there they go. They're going to carry those around all night for Dean Blevins. This is Craig Bullerjack. We say so long from Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi, with a final score, Mississippi State 47 and the Florida Gators 35. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.